There we go. Now we're live. Does it tell you too? Does it pop up? Yeah. There? Okay. I'm just yep. making sure. I'm I'm so new to this. Um. <laughs> so before we get started, I want to remind everybody that this is just our opinions. Um. This is Leroy's girlfriend at the time, and it is just strictly our opinions based on the autopsy report. I have seen um, video of that day and just her knowing Leroy. So she is going to just share her perspective with us. And I ask everybody to just tell us a little bit about Leroy. Anything that you want us to know before that day? Just get a feel of who he was before we talk about that. So, um, <clears throat> Leroy, he was born in Beloit, Wisconsin, even though everybody else in his family was Packer fans. He was like a diehard Bears fan. <clears throat> um, Leroy grew up mostly with his mom until he was around 13. Uh, she went to prison and he started having a lot of behavioral issues sure. and started getting trouble or in trouble. Blah, blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> from there, uh, with his mom being in prison, his grandma had already moved to Tennessee um, in Benton County. She lived in Big Sandy and everybody knew where his grandma's house was that was everybody knew her as as grandma yeah. <laughs> he referred to her as grandma soul that's what she was in his phone <laughs> um <clears throat> as a kid he uh, liked to play sports every sport except for soccer he was in ice hockey uh oh, wow. football um football was his favorite but he didn't like soccer. He thought that that was a girly sport. So really, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I guess I can see that. And wrestling. He just he definitely did not want to do wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> My brother was a wrestler. He he really liked wrestling. Yeah. Um, unless it was with girls, like <laughs> oh, Leroy yeah. was definitely a ladies' man, and oh, yeah. any female that ever met him and he was interested in, he like would make them fall in love. <laughs> and um, I met Leroy in 2018, which was a couple years after his divorce. But um, I was not expecting to be with him at all. I was seeing somebody else at the time who was in jail with Leroy. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, so... That guy was not very nice. I would nice. never expect it to be with my husband either. You're <laughs> night and day. I can promise you that. Um, but I was in, or I was visiting that guy at at the jail, and he was just not very nice at all. And Leroy asked him if that was his girl, and he told him that I was just some bitch. So Leroy was like, "Well, can I talk to her?" So uh, that guy messaged me later on, and he was like, "This dude wants to talk to you." He's like the ugliest dude in the unit. <laughs> and I was like, uh, knowing that he was just so mean, I was like, all right, I'll just make him jealous like, and talk to this guy just to piss him off. And shortly after, that guy completely went away. I stopped talking to him completely, even though I would be on visits with Leroy mm -hmm. and he could see me on visits with Leroy. Like, I just... I don't know what happened, right. but like he completely went from just being like a revenge to I thought that I was going to spend my life with him. <laughs> um, <clears throat> he got out of jail and he had not met me or my kids, but he got out of jail. We went out to eat and my kids were there and the first thing that my daughter said was she hopped up on his lap and she was like oh, you're my daddy <laughs> and uh, like everybody thought that that was her dad just because yeah. they look so much alike which is so weird except for he was bald even though he didn't want to admit it he had like 14 hairs on the top of his head that Aww. he would grow out and I was he was gonna ask like, if he yeah 
I was going to ask if he had a diamond or if he was, yeah. Going no, he would always grow those 14 hairs out. <laughs> and he would, if he was in jail, even if he wasn't, if there was light, he would be like trying to block the light. <laughs> you see these hair? I got hair. I had hair food while I was in jail. And, <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> now how old um, was he? He was 30 when he died. 30. He, it was a month before his 31st birthday. Oh, wow. Okay. And we had his funeral on his birthday and tried to make it more into like a celebration instead yeah. of something that was yeah. super sad. That's why I tell all my people, if it, if I ever pass, don't be sad. Right. <clears throat> my mom but, says when she passes, we are supposed to have tacos and country music <laughs> and drinking <laughs> and dancing and no black. We have to wear bright colors. <laughs> A lot of people wore red and black because those were Leroy's mm. favorite colors. And after his death, I learned that that is like the homicide awareness ribbon colors is red and black. Oh, yeah. And we had oh, like gosh. streamers outside that were red and black. <laughs> but um, I got I won't show you that hand. Um, never mind. Um, <clears throat> but. As an adult, um, like, Leroy started getting in trouble a lot more after his mom went to prison. Sure. And um, when he was 18, he went to prison. And that started, like, a little downhill spiral. Yeah. A lot. I mean, he was not doing very good things. But most of the time he would be arrested on violations of probation. So he was not receiving new charges. And that's what this was that day. Wasn't it a, a, a violation? Well, one of them was missing court. Yeah. And then the sheriff told me that the U S marshals received an out of state warrant, which was a violation of probation out of Wisconsin that day. Oh, that's why I said it. It said earlier that day. Yeah. yeah. Do you so, know that? Um, I'm sure that he probably did have a warrant. He, once he got out of jail, it, he got out of jail in April and he did not check in with his probation officer. So I'm assuming You're he right. probably did have one, <clears throat> which he always had a violation of probation. <laughs> it seemed like anyway, yeah. <laughs> but it was never for anything. Well, it was not for anything that he did. It was for what he did not do, which was check in regularly with his right. probation officer. Right. And if it wasn't Wisconsin, it was Tennessee. And even though he was already off of probation in Tennessee, they kept saying that they lost the paperwork and they don't know when his probation is supposed to be over with. But they kept arresting him for violations of probation. Like, like when we met in 2018, he got out of jail in 2019 and he was checking in with his probation officer here in Wisconsin. That's where I live. I live in Wisconsin, but um, he was checking in regularly. He had a job, a really good job. He was like a union job and he was making almost yeah. $20 an hour when he had barely ever worked outside of jail and uh, well he if he was with you he had the girls he had a family yeah, he had a family now but um so he was doing everything that he was supposed to and all of a sudden there was a warrant from tennessee saying that he wasn't checking in with his probation officer and he told his probation officer in wisconsin that there is no way because he was off of probation in tennessee and when she called down to Tennessee, they said that he was not done with probation in Tennessee and he needed to come back down. So he that started him going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> After we had gotten together. And that was <clears throat> in 2019. Right. And then. Wow. Wow. So. Well, um, now, where was his residence located? Wouldn't in Wisconsin. Have, 
wouldn't they have transferred that? Or would he? I've never he, been, he so I don't know much about how he didn't that transfer works. it to Wisconsin since he wasn't on probation in Tennessee. Okay. He just he updated it with his probation officer here in Wisconsin instead of the one in Tennessee yeah, since he didn't think that he needed to. Right. It was just a miscommunication. Right. But so <clears throat> um I don't remember what I was gonna say to bounce off of that. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, um, um he ended I remember what I was gonna say. Okay. He ended up getting arrested because of all that stuff in Tennessee. And when he got out of jail, he came back up here and we moved to Iowa, which he let his probation officer know that that was his plans, but he didn't, it wasn't approved yet by his probation officer. Gotcha. So he gotcha. did end up getting arrested in Iowa. He was uh, like the best dad when we lived in Iowa. I can I see mean, from the pic just all the videos and the pictures that I've seen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would come home and there would be like work all over our living room or like he would be sitting there watching movies with the kids and he'd have a margarita, or a, not a margarita. He would have probably killed me if I said that he had, a margarita. Have a, margarita. He had a bloody <laughs> Mary. He would have a bloody Mary and he would be have a kid on each side of him sitting in the recliner and they would be knocked out sleeping and he would uh. just be like, Put them to bed quick. Let's watch this movie. <laughs> and he yeah. be talking about how he would make me a Bloody Mary too. And I was like, oh, that's so gross. <laughs> I've never, I've drinking a lot in my life, but I don't think I've ever had Bloody Mary, to be honest uh, with you. No, me neither. I don't even want to try it. It sounds yeah, nasty. It doesn't sound appealing <laughs> to me. But, um, but then one day I was at work. And I had literally just gotten there, probably like a half hour after I got there. I got a call from the U.S. Marshals saying that they had Leroy and I needed to come home. And I, I started crying. I like couldn't believe it. Yeah. <clears throat> but I got home and the next time that I talked to Leroy, he was like, <clears throat> I walked Scarlett down to the bus stop to go get Paisley. My daughter was three years old at this time, the little one. So she wasn't in school yet. They hopped out of their SUVs. There was like three or four SUVs. They all hopped out, had their guns drawn on my daughter and Leroy. <clears throat> oh. My kid was three years old yeah. and they arrested Leroy. And he said that he thought about running, but was he was he not violent. Like when they, when they came down, like whether he ran, whether whatever, was he ever... If if he got arrested, he wasn't going to put up a fight and make it worse for himself. Right. <laughs> but he would always say that they were not going to catch him unless he wanted them to catch him, which I don't think that My he wanted them to catch them that time. time. <laughs> but he also Literally. wanted to make sure that my daughter was safe and that nothing happened to my daughter either. <clears throat> but it's crazy that they... If he was a non-violent person, you know, I would, I would think he had no a violent year old, they would have at least moved her out of this situation and then proceeded. That's right. crazy. You would they, think they, it's but crazy that they, they put it. her by herself in an SUV and put Leroy in a separate SUV. That's so my crazy. daughter, not knowing what's That's going crazy. on, just seeing the person that she calls her dad be arrested and she's alone. They sat there and waited. They took Leroy right away. <laughs> and uh, then they waited for my other daughter to get off the bus. And she would probably be expecting Leroy to be right well, there. Yeah. Instead, it was two U.S. Marshals. Take her into the SUV, back to my house. And they just sat inside my house until I got home, which was about a half hour, 45 minutes later. <clears throat> Even though I was like zooming because I wanted well, to be yeah. there before they took him. I would too. Yeah. <laughs> but then as soon as I got there, they one of them was standing inside of the, we had a trailer. One was standing inside of the trailer and the other one was standing in the garage with the garage door open. 
And then they just said that they were sitting there making sure that the kids were okay. My kid, they said that my kids did not talk to them at all. They just sat on my recliner, like holding each other. Cause they were scared. They didn't know what was going on. Right. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so I, I freaked like, out. I would because probably, <laughs> it would take a lot of strength for me to stay out of jail that day, knowing that's how all that went down for my kids. Right. Well, I am like completely on the opposite end. Like I have never, I've been arrested once for not paying a fine. I've never <laughs> even had a speeding ticket. And then, well, I spent the night in jail for some disorderly conduct. But before then, I had never had a speeding ticket. And then I go straight to, yeah, so I'm no angel. Nobody's. You little rebel. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, if it's not on my mom, my mom will tell you, I was the, out of all her kids, I was the button pusher. I was the rebel. And I'm dealing with that with my youngest now. He's my karma baby. So. Right. <laughs> yes. Oh, one of my daughters wants the older one. She wants to be a cop. And my, my the son little wants one, to be a cop. <laughs> the little one is terrified of cops. Oh, I don't know but, what my, my Camden, he will be two next month. And Ollie just turned five in June so I, they my kids I can see this all happen because they're so close in in the ages that your you your kids mm -hmm. were your girls were at this time and I would be one or three and one or not to uh I guess I'd be getting another disorderly conduct because <laughs> it would be hard um I talked to those officers just a little bit and they left within like five minutes of me getting home, they pretty much just told me where Leroy was at, yeah. what happened, why they were there and how the kids acted after he was gone. But <clears throat> either the next day or the day after the cops there were so nice in that County. Like uh, they let me go up to the courthouse or whatever and sit there in his extradition hearing. And he Leroy was in the shackles, the ones on his ankles mm -hmm. and his arms. And uh, there was only one officer. He let my daughter give him a hug. And uh, I tried to get her to give the officer a high five, but she was like so scared of him, Whoa. even though he wasn't there. But he let me give him a hug and a kiss. And then he let us sit there and talk until his hearing. And then afterwards, he let us give him a hug and a kiss again before they took him to jail and ended up taking him back to Wisconsin. <clears throat> there, are, and then, there are officers out there that make, you know, they understand regardless right. of this, you know, what's going on. They understand that those are two little girls that just see their dad. Right. And so I appreciate that. That That's awesome. Well, it was, <laughs> it was so nice. I wish we would have yeah. never left Iowa. Like things would have been so different. Mm -hmm. I think I hear if, that a lot if, in, 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 in Iowa. To, and talking to families, <clears throat> I, I I hear that a lot. But so then, anybody like anybody that knew Leroy knew how he said he was going to die. Leroy constantly was like, if you would sit down and talk to him, and the the if you would start talking about like heaven or God mm -hmm. or like how you were like death or how you would want to die, he said, it doesn't matter. I already know there's, there's going to be cops. There's going to be seven of them, which there was a lot more that, that were there when he died. But he, and seven is a biblical number. I'm not yeah. as yeah. Um, knowledgeable at, the Bible as Leroy was, but I know that that's some biblical number. <laughs> I don't know if M Leroy always thought that since he knew like so much about the Bible that he had like spiritual gifts, I guess you would say yeah. that he, like he couldn't tell the future, but like, like feelings, like strong, strong, strong feelings. And he told everybody that, like, he had only met my cousin maybe three or four times. 
And after he died, I was like, he always said this to me. He always said that this was how he was going to die. And she was like, dude, when I brought him to, cause she picked him up from jail and brought him back to Iowa. And she was like all the way back. That's what he kept telling me. Like <laughs> I that I he knew that that's how he was that going to much. die. And when, when me and him met, one of the things he told me was, don't let me go to Tennessee because this is what's going to happen if I go there. And, and he was I didn't believe him. I thought that he was a crazy person. Like, yeah. But which he was kind of crazy. <laughs> he his one of his favorite things to brag about was how fast he could run. And it took six months for the sheriff to call anybody. And for some reason, he chose to call me. And the one of the things that he said was that Leroy should have been a track star because he could <laughs> outrun any officer that on the force. <laughs> and I was like, it wasn't that he outran you guys. He outsmarted you guys yeah. because none of you would look up into the trees because he would climb the trees. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and it would piss the officers off that they could never get him unless he wanted them to, <clears throat> he would sit in the trees and take pictures of the cop oh looking for God. him down below. <laughs> and then he would tell the sheriff about it. Like <laughs> your officers were literally right by me and they didn't see me. He wouldn't tell them where he was, but he would tell the sheriff, yeah, like they were literally me. right there <laughs> and whatever. <laughs> but <Almost. clears throat> So he had there was a little a, bit of a cat and mouse history with with uh, the Ellie, huh? Yeah. Well, um, the sheriff said one of the things that he did say was that it was like a game. Yeah. And I told him <laughs> one time we were at his uncle's house here in Beloit, and uh, he was trying to show everybody, like, look, I can, I can run, I can hurdle, like nobody can get me, <laughs> and he ran. And his pants got stuck on the gate and he like flopped his face <laughs> into the fence. <laughs> and the sheriff said that Leroy told him that story. <laughs> oh my, I can see that in my mind. I ran uh, a little bit of sprints and then I, I was just not a sports person myself, but uh, mm -hmm. I tried jumping over those hurdles one time. I'm five three and I tried running <laughs> over this hurdles and I, yep, I fear. Leroy right. was 5'8", but yeah. and I'm 5'8", and I was like, there is no way that you are 5'8", and his autopsy report proved it, because it said that he was 5'6", <laughs> and, his, and it, on his dad's side, the, his dad is about the same height, but on his mom's side, they're all like 4'11", 4'10", yeah. oh. like they're yeah. super short, so I always told him that he got his mom's jeans too. <laughs> Yeah. Even though he looks like his dad, he got his My mom's genes. Six two, six three, six two, and mm -hmm. I believe every one of his kids are going to be just as tall up there. <laughs> his his daughter is already taller than me by far. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna be look. I tell him all the time. I'm gonna be looking up to everybody for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> My kid, my oldest, she's like the same height as his mom and his grandma right now. Yeah. So it was so funny. Because, uh, his mom, I believe, is 51, maybe? 50 yeah. or 51. And his grandma just turned 70 over the summer. And my kids, like, are right there. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is so crazy. She's seven, and she's the same height as y'all. <laughs> That's but, <clears throat> so um, when Leroy would talk about how he was going to die, he said that he had a lot of officers, at least the drug task force, yeah, that were so just angry with him because he would get all these charges and they would always, he would always be found innocent. Like they would pull him over. There was one time that 
an officer was just sitting on the road at the end of the driveway. The driveway was maybe about a quarter mile long. And there was an officer like sitting down there. As soon as Leroy left, they tried to get him and he ran <laughs> and they, they didn't catch him. My husband would try <laughs> that too. So he ended up getting, or he was going through court at this, at the time of his yeah. death for that. And like, it was going to end up getting dropped because they never caught him. They couldn't prove who it was. He would be mad that I would be like saying it was him. I know, I know it was him, but <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, and then the the gun charge he had a gun charge at the time of his death and they had he had gotten a ride from one of his friends and there was an officer stopped at the stop sign Leroy was in the back seat there were two girls in the front seat all three of them were felons so none of them were supposed to have a gun Leroy said that that car was so messy that he had to like fetal position in the back seat just to like sit yeah. in it, which he should be used to because my car is like the same way. And he hated it because he was like a clean freak. But mm. the officers at this stop sign got out of their vehicle, like didn't turn their lights on or nothing. They came over to the vehicle, started talking to the people in front, saw Leroy and asked everybody to get out of the vehicle. And then they asked the driver if they could search her vehicle. And she said yes. And they found under all this crap a gun. And Leroy was the only one charged with it. Oh, wow. Because it was by him. And he was going through court at the time of his was death, too. For this. He says that it was, or he said that it was not. Was not. He said that he didn't even know that there was a gun in the car. And it was really... <laughs> I mean, mess. They had to dig to find it. So yeah, right. You can see that. <clears throat> but the first offer that they gave him was three to four years in a federal prison for having a a firearm as a felon, and he hired a lawyer. The next plea deal that they gave him was eight months in the county jail, which he had already sat eight months in jail, but Leroy continued, he denied that, that deal and said that he was not taking a charge for a gun that was not his because he had no charges like that, that were as serious as that. As and gun. he did not want something like that on his record. Right. <clears throat> not saying that in the past, Leroy would not carry a gun at times, but in that situation, like it was not his. Right. And he just he did not want to take it. <laughs> well, no. I, 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 I stole, you know, I'm no angel. I've never stolen from a single soul. But I back in my high school days, we hit up values, you know, in all these places. <laughs> and uh I was with a group of girls one day and I told them, told them, told them, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. So I was not. And right. uh, sure enough, they got caught and I didn't have, thankfully, I didn't have anything on me and I, they mm -hmm. let me go. But yeah, they all got charged that day for whoever had something on them. And that's well, and then how it was that day in the truck or the, the vehicle <laughs> they were in. Right. Well, he was pissed because all three of them were felons yeah. and he was the only one charged with it. What did they say <laughs> so, about it? Did anybody own it? They to said that. The, I don't know what one of the girls said, but he, Leroy said that he got that report uh, through his lawyer and the girl had said that it was his. So Leroy, when they went to court, like he was never sentenced on that. Right. So um, he kept saying that he wanted that girl subpoenaed because he wanted her to look him in the eyes and say that that was his gun. Yeah. <clears throat> but so he was in jail from August of 2020 up until April of 2021. And uh, because of COVID, they kept not picking him up for court because he was in the Henry County Jail in Tennessee, which is in Paris. 
-hmm. and Benton County is one of the next, like the next county over. And he had that felony eluding charge yeah. that um, they were going to end up dropping since whatever, but they kept not picking him up for court, which they kept saying was because of COVID. But he would tell me all the time, call Kenny Christopher, which is the sheriff, call Kenny Christopher. He'll come get me like, and the times that I did, Ken would come and pick him up. They would sit there and talk and whatever that he'd go to court or at least know what was going on. Ken would call him or, or would speak to him while Leroy was in jail and like, let him know what was going on with the case or the, whatever the court stuff. Right. And, right. um, but they kept not coming to get him like over and over. <laughs> and so one day, Leroy had court the follow. It was Sunday and Leroy had court the following day at nine o'clock in the morning. So he was like, you know what? They just opened up the courts. They're not doing zoom meetings. So can you please call around to a bondsman and get me out of here so that I can go to court and get that stuff taken care of? Because it like that was the least of his problem. Yeah. yeah. So he wanted to get that taken care of. And I was like, I guess. <laughs> I mean, his yeah. bond was six thousand dollars, so I had to pay a little bit over six hundred. Yeah. And um, so I bonded him, or I sent the bondsman money, and the bondsman went up to the jail, and he sat there, and he was like, <clears throat> "If Leroy's getting released, I will take him home." <laughs> well, he sat there for like two or three hours, and they told him the bondsman that Leroy had a hold in Benton County. So they could not release him, which we already knew. But the bondsman called me and he was like, you guys realize he has a hold, like he's not getting out. And I was like, but he's going to get to go to this other court or this other jail so that he can get his court stuff handled. That was all Leroy wanted to do was get that mm -hmm. stuff handled because he wanted to go to rehab. <clears throat> Leroy was an addict and he wanted, he finally wanted to start changing his life around. Good. Like he yeah. ended up, he loved anything to do with God and church. And he wanted to get his yeah. life. I think people get confused with that, you know, mm -hmm. just because you have faith and you believe in God does not mean you are, we are flawed humans. You know, we make right. mistakes. <laughs> I am no angel and I believe, and I tell you in this past year, I've grown, there's a difference between having faith and believing and I have grown in faith, but I am no angel. And then if I even <laughs> tried to say that, half of these people on my page would be like, what, you know you in real life. <laughs> right. So by all but means. Leroy talked about someday becoming a pastor. And uh, that was one of the reasons that he wanted to, get clean and start changing his life around. Yeah. <clears throat> he was tired of going to jail. Like, yeah. and uh, especially because most of the time it wasn't even for a charge. It was for not keeping in touch with what he called his babysitter. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. like, I'm 30 years old. I don't need a babysitter anymore. Like <laughs> all of that stuff that I used to do, that is way in the past. Because his, it all started with he would steal cars and he would steal. And uh, that's what started the whole thing. And they I just kept arresting him on I mean, violations. Not me personally, but I can uh, relate to those types right. of charges with somebody. Right. And uh, it just just kept going and going and going. And he just kept going to jail for what was nothing. And every, most of the time he would get revocated. He wouldn't sit. He wouldn't just sit for a little while and come home. It was two years, three years. Like, Jeez. On, yeah. And like he had board. not spent a Christmas with his family since he was maybe like 18, 19 years old. And that's all he wanted to do was get that all of that taken care of so that he could spend a holiday with his family. <laughs> and 
especially his grandma because like his grandma is 70 years old yeah. like she's in very good health but you never know when that could change right his grandma she breeds great danes and <laughs> she like i said she is 411 and she breeds and she great breeds danes great. <laughs> and she uh, like will break up fights and she just has like no fear of these dogs yeah. even though like she, every once in a while she would fall and she broke her hip once and uh because of Feisty. The, the trying to get the, oh, yes <laughs> 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 but just like trying to break up dog fights or the dogs being so excited to see her and them jumping up on her and she ended up breaking the her collarbone and yeah <sighs> And he would always tell her, like, I think it's time you need you slow Send down. June, Grandma. <laughs> but nope. She just after well, before Leroy died, she bought a dog. Uh, just a little puppy because her, her male had passed away, Remy or Remington. But one of her males had passed away. So she bought a new one and she Leroy had seen the pictures of the dog, but he wasn't like old enough yeah. for him to come home yet. So after Leroy died, the dog came home and his name became Leroy. <laughs> and he like had the same piercing blue eyes as Leroy. Yeah. And he loved spending time with the kids and his grandma. Every once in a while he would come over by me, but <laughs> he loved the, spending time with the kids uh -huh. and his grandma, especially like he would, I call him little Leroy, even though that's what most people call Leroy because Leroy. his dad's name was Leroy and then he's okay. his name was Leroy yeah. but and then we had little Leroy the little dog <laughs> and I don't know he was I mean he is so much like Leroy oh yeah I met a lot of <laughs> dog owners that their dog looks just like them <laughs> also, so yeah and acts just like them it's crazy yeah um, but let's see. <clears throat> so <laughs> he was in jail up to a month before this happened. Correct. Oh, I didn't even finish that story. <laughs> no, it's but, okay. I was, I, you just speak. Thank you for bringing me back. <laughs> like I, my brain goes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, <laughs> I think it really helps getting to know these people besides what happened to them. I think it's a real, you know, it just brings life to all the words and pictures that we see, you know? So I think right. it's important. But Leroy, he, that bondsman was there to bond him out. And he was told that Leroy had that hold in Benton County. So he would not be released. So then the bondsman left. At six like five or six o'clock Monday morning, Leroy began calling me on the phone. You need to call Kenny Christopher. You need to call the the Benton County Jail. Like you need to call these people and see what's going on because I have court at nine o'clock and I cannot miss it. Like <clears throat> I want to be there. I want to get the stuff taken care of. Just call them over and over. Like he literally would call me every fifteen minutes, and until he was released and sit there and tell me you need to call these people did you call them what did they say are they on their way are they here like what's going on every 15 minutes and yeah. i finally was like dude stop <laughs> just i can't even call because every time just, i try to call just you call for me. my one night little stay in jail before um I, I i didn't know anything um if i was gonna see the judge that day i went in on a thursday so if I didn't get to see him that Friday, I would have to wait till Monday. But I didn't know a thing. They were calling people, calling people, and they stopped calling people on that Friday. And then everybody's like, well, you'll be here till Monday. And then out of the blue, they walk in. They were like, Miss Sisson. And I went, to, I didn't know anything. Not a single thing that was happening until they came in and called my name. Right. And Leroy, well, as anybody would be, was not very patient. <laughs> yeah, I was not. So from five or six o'clock in the morning until eight o'clock, 
Leroy was calling and calling and I was on the phone with him around eight o'clock in the morning. So this was an hour before his court date. And he was like, all right, uh, they just called my name. So um, they're about to come and get me or whatever. And then uh, uh, I'll go to court. And as soon as I get back to Benton County jail, I'll call you. I was like, all right. Well, then five minutes later, he was like, they said, never mind. They don't know what's going on. And so I don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> well, then while I was on the phone with him that time, he was like, all right, they just came in and said that Benton County's here to get me. So I'm going to go to Benton County. And as soon as I get done with court, I'll call you, let you know what happened. And you'll probably have to come and get me. All right. <laughs> Yay. Finally. Know what that, yeah. <laughs> well, I then it's like to be the one on the inside and the one on the receiving outside <laughs> your position too. I, I know that very much too. Having to so do all then, these things, figure it out from the outside. Right. Well, around, I'd probably say like 11, 12 o'clock, I had not heard anything from Leroy. Yeah. So I ended up calling up to the, or I looked on Vine, which is like a, a victim um, website where you can look to see if somebody is in jail or not. And it just said that he had been released from the Henry County Jail but it didn't have anything saying that he was in Benton County. So I called up to the Benton County jail and they said that he was not an inmate at their jail. And I was like, what do you mean? He's not an inmate what? at your jail. <laughs> so then I called Henry County and I asked them like, what happened? Did Leroy get transferred or what happened? And they said, no, he was released a, a little after eight o'clock this morning. So I lived in Kentucky at the time with his mom and his grandma. His grandma had a couple different properties on like one area. So I was like two and a half hours away and I was like, okay, so Leroy has no phone. Nobody mm -hmm. knew he was getting out. So he has no car. So he probably missed court. Like, where is he at? What is he doing? <laughs> like as a girlfriend, yeah you are always like what the fuck is going on <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, i went to go pick up my husband when one time uh we've been together for about seven years and this was way back he got picked up on something he did before we were together and he never got it taken care of and they finally caught up with him and when they went to go i didn't know that he was released they said that he could possibly be out at this time um, and by the time I got there, he had already been sitting there for like at least 45 minutes before the time they would even, they even said that he was going to be released. And I had no idea about anything. You know, he was just walking down the street as I was driving up <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, there you are. <laughs> so, um, so then I started like asking around to see if anybody else knew where he was like, yeah. um, so a few weeks ago when the sheriff finally called me, I asked him like, what happened? And uh, he said that because we had no, the sheriff's department had no communication with anybody up until two weeks ago. And they had communication with one person one time. <laughs> so um, even though we were calling constantly, me and his grandma constantly were calling the sheriff's department to figure out what happened, why these things happened. Yeah. But, um, yeah. so when I talked to the sheriff and asked him like, why was he released? If y'all had that hold on him and he was like, something went wrong. The Henry County jail must not have seen like the hold. And I was like, I know that they saw the hold because, they told us that there was a hold. So I knew that they knew that, or yeah. I knew that they knew there was a hold. So then I called the Henry County jail and I asked them like what happened because that when I called them that day that he was released, they said that the hold was dropped and I was like, okay, but you guys literally just told him that Benton County was there and you still let him go. <laughs> like I, I'm, it was, over 12 hours they sat yeah, there holding crazy. him until yeah. less than an hour before his court date in a whole nother county <clears throat> and so when i called them this time they said that they don't know what happened it was probably on benton county's end they probably figured that 
it wasn't that serious and they probably just dropped his hold. But the sheriff was saying that the hold was never dropped. He was supposed to be transferred over here. So I don't know what happened. I, it seems like they were trying to set him up to fail. That's what I was going to say. Like, he that, was already being set up for failure at that point, I feel like. Right. Whether it was on purpose or whether it's just the way things happened, that, that was just... Right. He said that from August to April, if you're going to release somebody, they're not going to want to go right back to jail. <laughs> no matter who you are, you could yeah. be a saint. Mm -hmm. And no matter who you are, you're not going to want to go right back to jail, mm -hmm. especially his mom was having a lot of health problems at that time. I had just moved from Iowa to Kentucky to take care of her because he was going to get all of his court stuff figured out. And then he wanted to go to rehab for 12 months. Cause you and, guys were planning on, weren't you planning on moving next door? Yep. Yeah, uh, at the time of his death, we lived in the house next door to his grandma with his mother and then the kids. Okay. So, um, where was I going with that? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I just, I just wanted to, Cause you guys were, you, cause you were in Kentucky. He was in Tennessee. Right. Me and so, um, me and Leroy two weeks before he had passed away, Leroy had overdosed and which has never happened before. Leroy did not ever do heroin mm -hmm. and it was, he did not overdose on heroin, but Leroy had overdosed. And when that happened, uh, it was probably about one or two o'clock in the morning. I had and, passed a few years ago of, of an overdose. Mm -hmm. So, and to my <laughs> knowledge and from what I've heard from all of his friends, that was the only, the first and only time he had ever overdosed. And, um, we were laying in bed and all of a sudden he started like, Ugh, uh, like gasping for mm -hmm. air. And then it just stopped. And I didn't want to wake his mom up because, like, I didn't want her to freak out because she yeah. just yeah. is too much sometimes. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I ran over to his grandma's house and, like, knocked on the door. I knocked on her window, and I didn't hear anything. Like, I was rushing because I was freaking out. But then I came back to the house, and I woke his mom up. And I was like, I think that Leroy is overdosing. And she called an ambulance right away. And uh, she told me to start CPR on him, yeah. which I'm so I started CPR mm -hmm. and nothing was working. His skin was turning gray. His eyes were open, but you could only see the whites of his eyes because they were to the back of his head. Like it was the scariest thing. My I kids woke it. up and were was oh, watching nice. like so the Leroy was once we got him to wake up. He heard the dispatch on the phone and was pissed. And from what I understand, yeah. when it went, especially if you use Narcan, which we did, if people wake up, they're not happy. And Leroy was not. Yeah. <laughs> he heard dispatch and flipped out because he thought that I had called the cops on him. So he left. <laughs> and his phone had dropped out of his pocket. So before he could see it, I like grabbed it. Because I knew that there was somebody waiting for him in town. And I figured if he had his phone, he was not going to come back because he was going to go back down to Tennessee. Well, the following day, all we did was argue. Because he came back that same night and we argued. And he was like, you know, I'm pissed at you, but I love you. I just want to go to sleep. You can stare at me all you want, but I'm going to bed. Yeah. <laughs> and I did. I stared at him like all night because I was terrified. Oh, I had sure. never seen somebody yeah. like anything like that happen before. So the next day, um, my family is all from Wisconsin, but um, yeah. my kid's grandpa, he is a truck driver. So every time he would come through Kentucky, we would all go out to eat. And I went out to eat with him. And when I came back, Leroy was like, you know what? I'm just pissed. I don't want you here. You can go stay with my grandma. Like, I don't want you here. So we got into a huge fight. And I ended up staying at somewhere else that night. And the, the next day, Leroy's grandma had told me 
that she told him he needed to leave and like there was just too many issues going on and he needed to either get sober and go to rehab or he needed to leave and he decided to leave so for the last two weeks me and Leroy would talk every day we would sit there and argue about what happened but we would sit there and talk he would almost every day tell me that he knew that this was it like he was going to die um he sent texts all the time like tell the kids that or after I die tell the kids that I love them and it none of this was like their fault and uh, like I just I know something is going to happen and after he had died I got a text sent to my phone of a like a screenshot and it was three days prior one of his friends had texted the person that Leroy was staying with and was like, Hey, I'm selling Leroy's gun. I'm using that money to get a car. Leroy responded, fuck it. I'm going to get killed anyway. I think that he did have a gun at one time. And I think that at that time he knew something was going to happen and he was trying to protect himself. And that is how I feel because in the past, Leroy had told me, either in 2016 or 2017, um, there was an instance where Leroy was inside a house, he had a warrant, and the cops showed up. And he said that that night they tried to kill him and they did not succeed. He came out of the house, or they found him in a closet with a blanket wrapped around him. They had used tear gas, not as much tear gas as they used the day that they killed him, so but, that's where I was a little confused on. That's where they found him that time with the cover was a previous right. time, not right this time. Yeah. Okay. So um, they found him in a closet with a blanket wrapped around him. Leroy came out from what the sheriff said. Leroy was like, can I have a soda or something? If I'm going to jail, just let me have a drink. <clears throat> so the sheriff was like, well, dude, I'm not going to feed you. (laughs) So the sheriff put the handcuffs in front of him and they sat there and the sheriff told me that they sat there and they drank a Coke and then they went, went to jail, sat and talked for a little bit. But after that time, Leroy constantly was watching his back. He was terrified that they were going to kill him. That's one reason we moved to Iowa because nobody knew him there. The right. cops did not know him. Like he had the best shot yeah, away from him, you know? people yeah. who knew him. Yeah. And he started carrying a backpack where he, well, so Leroy started wearing like a bulletproof vest because he was scared he was might get shot. But then he also started carrying a backpack that had like a towel uh, water, which is pretty much for tear gas. Like if you put okay. the water over it, over the towel, you can right. breathe through it. And it kind of probably, I don't know. I've never been around tear gas, but Me neither. I didn't assuming, even know that this is yeah, mm-hmm. information. I'm assuming that it blocks most of that gas from like breathing it in. Yeah. But, and he would have, like when I picked up his stuff from jail before me and Leroy even met, there was like three or four phone batteries. And uh, so Leroy would always carry, carry extra phone batteries Mm -hmm. that were charged and he would have extra shoes in this backpack and like most of the time an extra phone. And if not, he always made sure to have extra batteries. Yeah. Like, because he was so scared if something happened, he needed to be able to call somebody to come and get him or let them know what was going on. And no matter where we were, he like constantly watched his back, which I just thought that he was paranoid, (laughs) like, or just psychotic or something. I don't know. (laughs) I have never been involved in anything like that before. Like that was not, I just have never been with somebody like that. I, I don't know. I so I just was like, this guy is just crazy. 
That's why I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> but like after he died, like for me, things just started making sense. The day that he died, he was over at the house that he was at when he died. Somebody, one of his friends came to pick him up and they hung out for a little while and he was dropped back at that house, which it was the chief of police of Camden, Tennessee. It, he owned the house. Inside of the house, there was three of his family members, yeah. or I guess four, four family members and then another friend. So when, um, when Leroy got dropped off, from what one of the girls says that was at the house, she said within seconds, the cops were outside, but I don't know for sure. Right, like right. ever since I've talked to that girl, she has blocked me on Facebook. She will not answer phone calls. She well, I mean, like I the only time that she of- ever messaged me was when I got the autopsy and said something about it being ruled as a homicide. She wanted to talk then, and ever since then, she has blocked all communication <clears throat> or any way for me to contact her. So for me, it's weird. Comment. Yeah. <laughs> and especially because when I talked to her, like, it sounded like she was crying and she was upset. And she kept saying, like, it was not me. I did not kill him. It was the police. The police wanted him dead. They know what they did. Like, it was not me. But and uh, talking about all these good things about Leroy and how that was like one of her best friends and like just kept saying, I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. It was the police. They knew what was going to happen. But now there's no contact with her. She blocked me and my phone number. Like, it's just odd to me. Oh, yeah. Like, I would think I would want to if if. Like for me anyway, I want to know everything that happened to Leroy. I want to know what happened before he died. Like anything that was said in the house, Every anything he said, how he was feeling that day. Like, and uh, I would think as you're saying that this man is your best friend, like, yeah. why don't you want to know? Why don't you want to help? Like, it's strange. I just. <clears throat> Just given the situation and whose house it was and the people that were in there, I bet a lot of people are afraid to speak. If they could do this to him and get away with it, you know, somebody says something. Well, there's been a lot of people, not even people that knew Leroy, but people that have heard about what happened to him and they've messaged me and they're like, look, stuff like this happens all the time ah, but it right. doesn't nothing happens because people are scared to talk yeah. and uh after leroy died i stayed over at one of his friend's houses and um i won't say his name or anything but no, uh, i stayed over at one of his friend's houses and he was like i came in i had never met this man <clears throat> but i went there with one of leroy's other friends and we stayed there for a couple days just so that I could, I didn't have my kids. I couldn't like, I just needed some time yeah. like for myself, process my thoughts, not have Leroy's mom and grandma around and all the craziness and just some time for me. One of the first things that this man said to me was if you mess with the police enough, they're either going to make your death look like a suicide or you're never going to be found. Yeah. And Leroy's case the whole thing was filmed and so i'm like, saying there was a lot of video i mean the area was they believed that um he was armed inside there didn't they right apparently they didn't clear the area i mean from the no. video i seen there was nothing no they uh there. leroy's ex-wife she was a couple blocks down the road from what i understand like trying to figure out like what was going on. This was her ex-husband. Like they were high school sweethearts. They'd known each other forever. And uh, like, no matter who Leroy was with, like even when he was with me or he's been with other females since they broke up or they got divorced. And 
that was he would always say that that was like his rib like because she was born only a couple days after he was and he was like that was my soulmate like that that was just his person so she was a couple blocks or within blocks of of yeah. the house and the cops literally came down to her car ripped her out of the car and brought her onto the scene <laughs> they while they were there um the videos that were taken were taken from two houses down so i mean wasn't one of them like literally right next door i mean that that's where they were standing they were like at least a yard away from the the police state right. well um so there was the house there was a like um that gray car that you can see that is uh, two driveways down so there was a house in between but they were bringing people across the street from the house to yeah. question them yeah. there was in the house on the other side of the house leroy was in there were two kids inside that house it by themselves they did not have parents there <clears throat> it took them hours to evacuate those kids and the gun that they said that Leroy had was an AR-15, which I know nothing about guns. Me either, but not too much. from what I understand, that's an assault rifle. So, which is the same guns that police carry, like the SWAT teams. Mm -hmm. So, I'm assuming he could have, like, if if he would have had a gun from, but from what I understand, he did not. But if he would have had a gun and he started shooting at police, it would not be anything for like the houses are not that far from each other. No, so, it was very close knit. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. everybody that lives around there is like nephews, nieces, cousins of that chief of police. Like they all have their own yeah. little community. Well, like the yeah. people who took those videos. I believe, I can't quote because I don't know for sure, yeah. but I believe that they're somehow related. Like everybody um, in that area is family. And after Leroy died, one of his friends took me to the house and I tried to walk inside because I wanted to see like where he died. I, I mean, I could physically be in the spot that I know they brought his body out and laid it, but I wanted to see where he died and the damage done to the house and she was like dude you're gonna get arrested all of these people are his family like you the everybody is watching this house you cannot go in there so we ended up leaving but <clears throat> that is crazy <clears throat> but so from what the girl had told me um when police got there her and Leroy's other friend, because Leroy was only friends with two of the people that were in the house. The other three people was just family that lived there, lived there. or was visiting. And when all of the police came, they thought these two friends, she said that they thought that the police were there for somebody that lived next door or across the street or something. So they came out to like, you know, be nosy like everybody Check else. Is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would. But um, from what she is saying, they asked her, like, is Leroy in the house? Is Leroy in the house? And she says no. Or she told me that they said no, Leroy's not there. They're like, well, we know he's here and his phone was right. pinged here. So she, they went back into the house and everybody evacuated except for Leroy. Leroy was the only one that did not come outside of the house. And they, the police asked from, this is her recollection. She's saying that the police uh, asked everybody if Leroy had a gun and everybody said, no, that is what she is saying. Police are saying that when they got there, everybody came out of the house except for Leroy saying that he had an AR-15 on him. So I'm not sure who to believe. <laughs> I just I just feel like from the video that I've seen, the, the officers just didn't act or appear like they thought somebody was inside their arm. 
well, I agree. <laughs> you know, I just, and that's just from me watching the videos that witnesses took that day. Right. Like just watching the whole vibe time. of it. I told my husband, I said, if I didn't know any better, it looked like it was just a 5-0 block party. Or, you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it pretty much was. The they ordered they pizza did. and they sat outside and ate pizza. Yeah. And, and nobody uh, acted like this. there was a man inside with a gun. Or that, or that right. was on. Not just any gun. An assault rifle. Yeah. <laughs> One, like, the gun that they said that he had is like a military grade gun. Like, it's not just a shotgun a or a normal you know. rifle. It's, yeah, not a handgun. It's one that is meant to kill. <laughs> like, and now I don't know how the range of that it, kind of gun, but. Could he have had, you know, um, a weapon of uh, convenience? Could it have been one that was already in the house at the time? I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> These are questions I that I've tried, I've tried getting yeah, yeah. answers to. Unfortunately, I am not family, so uh, right. I but. like the district attorney. He'll talk to me. I've talked to him once, but um, and I've talked to the sheriff once. I've talked to the chief of police a few times, and because he's the owner of the house, so I had like I wanted to tell him that I was sorry for what happened, but yeah. he said that there's no reason that we should be sorry, like. In his own words, he said that that they knew that something was going to end up happening if they threw that amount of tear gas into the house. The um, a lawyer from the area had told us that there were 38 rounds of tear gas thrown into that house, and I don't know for sure because I don't know how. Like I know how big a square foot is, but that house is a relatively small house. You cannot get to the basement inside the house. You have to go outside, and it has one of those little, like, I don't know. looks like a triangle, kind of, and the doors open. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. But you can't get to the house, the basement from inside of the house. Are you frozen? I guess I'm just here. I don't know where she went. Well, I guess since she's not here, um, I'm sure she'll pop on soon. But that house is literally like 900 square feet, I'd say. <clears throat> so 
from what I understand, um, there should only have been like one or two rounds of tear gas thrown in maximum. Um, from his autopsy, I have read that the they're called OC canisters, I guess. I don't know if they call all tear gas OC canisters. I don't know this kind of stuff, but um, they are designed for outdoor use, not inside. <laughs> um, and anywhere from 35 to 42 have, were used in that house. <clears throat> um, for me, that's crazy. And if you are a trained officer, you should know how, like, what that does to a person. I don't know where she went. <laughs> um, I don't know if I should, like, end it and wait for her to, like, re-invite me or what. <laughs> Can't hear you. There you are. I had my mind tuned off until you hop back in. Sorry, there's some outages in my area. I lost connection there for a second. Yeah, I didn't oh. do that in morning class, but let me be on live with you. And there it goes. <laughs> but, so. um, I was saying that that house is roughly probably between 800 and 900 square feet. It's a very small house. Yeah. And from people that were there, not any law enforcement or anything, just like bystanders, said that there was anywhere between 35 and 42 rounds of tear gas that were thrown in. And um, the or a lawyer has said that there was 38, to be exact. Now, I don't know if that is an exact number. 
Yeah. Like some, I went to the, I've been to the house a couple different times and there was one lady who said like 68, there was like 68 of them, which I don't think that there was that many. I hope not. I mean, I wish there wouldn't have been more. I wish there was zero, but Um, so I just think is very, I mean, he, I don't know. He, they didn't act like he was armed and it was just a really relaxed atmosphere. And did, was he responding to anybody? Um, Leroy's ex-wife called Leroy's grandma around five o'clock at night and, uh, it's on his autopsy report. It says that he was declared dead at 10, 10 PM. So, um, at five o'clock when we got the phone call that this was all going on, um, we began texting him and calling him. Um, Leroy's ex-wife began, was texting and calling him. A bunch of his friends were texting and calling. Nobody had contact with Leroy at all. The police said that they had no contact with him at all. Like they, they refused to let anybody go over a loudspeaker unless it was police. Um, because his ex-wife and some of his friends that were on the scene, they were like, we know what to say to get him to come out. And like, because this was not the first time that he had been in a house and did not want to come out. Right. But, um, the from what i understand the one time that he barricaded himself inside the house he didn't barricade himself he was sitting in a closet with a blanket wrapped around him right like they could have came in anytime and, he wasn't and they armed ended up coming in then. right he wasn't harmed he like they came in they arrested him he had drank some coke with the sheriff and went to jail mm-hmm. like this time was just a little different. It sounds like it was hours and hours. Mm -hmm. And like, we were calling the police and talking to them on the phone and they were telling us, just keep trying to get him to talk. Like maybe if he hears from you guys, he didn't respond to you guys either. Right. And, and like, if he was going to respond to anybody, it would have been his grandma. Like yeah. that was his entire life was his grandma. I can Everything he that. did was for his grandma. Yeah. And if he was going to respond to anybody, he would have responded to his grandma. I was like, a big grandma's before. girl. So I can, right. <laughs> I can relate like, to that. She'd probably be the only one to get me out of there too. <laughs> yeah. And he responded to nobody. Like the one person that they let talk to him. Right. The one person from what I understand that they let go over that intercom was his friend that was inside the house before uh, everybody evacuated. So was he close with his friend? Not very close. I mean, they, um, it just doesn't make sense for all he people. He had then. their squabbles. <laughs> yeah. Like, they were not, like, he. if Leroy was going to tell you who his friends were, like, in his circle, he was not going to tell you that, that. the people inside of that house were those, were right. that person. Right. I, they were more acquaintances than friends. <clears throat> But, so was he just being dropped off that day just to hang out, just to uh, under his impression? Well, he was, from what I understand, um, the person that dropped him off said that he dropped him off at the house. He dropped Leroy off at the house and he was going to be back in a couple hours to get him because Leroy didn't want to stay around there. Gotcha. Yeah. Like he was just there to kick it for a little bit and then he was going to leave and probably wouldn't have been back there at least for a few days. At least. <laughs> yeah. But. Okay. I didn't even realize that Leroy was over there. I seems from what I've heard him say about some of the people that were there, 
I'm not understanding why he would have been there in the first place. <laughs> I, I have a lot of, I know a lot of people where they hang out with certain individuals and I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. I can relate but, to that. So she said that he was not armed. She, she was telling me on the phone that she never told anybody that he had a gun. Okay. The police, on the other hand, said that everybody came out and all five of them said that he had an AR-15. Now, with him not being responding to anybody and not coming out initially, do you think that, I guess what I'm saying, my opinion is I don't think that he was able to walk. I, from so what I learned, I feel right from reading the autopsy. My opinion is that I don't there was probably, he, it he was, was probably breathing. not his choice to not come out. Yeah. Like he was breathing because there was um, ashes or smoke in his, soot. In his yeah. The word in was his, soot. <laughs> so you know that he was breathe like he had to. Right. Right. But I don't think that he was able to come out. And um, from police statements, yeah. after the the first maybe three days, we talked to officer after officer after officer, not the sheriff, but different officers. And each one had a different story. First, it was, well, I was in contact with two different TBI agents, which is the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations for anybody that doesn't know. And Leroy's grandma was in touch with another TBI agent and they all had different stories. <laughs> one yeah. person said that they found the gun right away. The That's other one said that the there's not a gun. <laughs> like we didn't find a gun. There's not a gun. And then another TBI agent said, well, we haven't found a gun yet. And then like the next day he said, well, we found it. But when I talked to the owner of the house, he said that two days after Leroy yes, died, is. they went into the house. He took the police into the house and he was the one who found the gun, which Not, before there have been people in and out of there already. Right. Right. So like where did they find the gun. They're saying or that the chief of police, the homeowner said that they found it in the hallway. So they went in to the front door which is the living room is right there. Then to the right is a hallway. The gun was found in that hallway on the right. And then there is a front bedroom and a back bedroom. Leroy was apparently found in the front bedroom. So regardless, they would have, the firefighters that went in to get him had to go over an assault rifle to get to him and then pull his body over that assault rifle. Like, I don't know I don't know because I've never walked over a gun in the middle of a fire, yeah. but I would assume you would probably trip over it and it like, like you would probably see at it. I don't know. Last, I would have at the very least see it. Right. You see and take note like, Hey, wouldn't that be something that they would grab immediately? You would think. Right. Well, maybe not the firefighters, but at least yeah. the next day when they went in, the whole standoff was because he had a gun that would have been if i was an officer or a detective i would assume that if this man was killed because or died or whatever they want to say if this man died over him having a gun we're going to find this gun and that's that <laughs> but they did not from what the chief of police is saying they did not find the gun the night he died, the next day, but the two days later, when they brought the homeowner into the house, a gun was there all of a sudden. All of a sudden. See, it is, a lot of people say, you know, this was a, like a, a accidental homicide due to the standoff. And But I just feel like, yeah, normally I would agree. But there was right. just so much surrounding and so much the handling that was that it just it doesn't make sense. Right. All the, the, if it if that's how it really happened, I would imagine all the stories would be at least simu similar. Right. 
you would think that the cops would be all on the same page, but they're not. <laughs> and it, like every time it's different. When I talked to the sheriff, he was telling me about the time that, you know, they drank their Cokes or whatever and went to jail mm. and how Leroy was found in the closet with a blanket around him. When I talked to him, he gave me the same story that Leroy was in the closet and had a blanket around him and that's how he was found. But then when I talked to the chief of police, and this was way before I had talked to the sheriff, but the chief of police, I asked him, where was Leroy found? Like, do you know anything? Can you give me anything? And he said that Leroy was sitting up, propped up against the bedroom door. I don't know. From what I have read in the autopsy, most of the front of his body had superficial burns. The tops of his feet had burns. He had burns along his face. And this... This, whatever this area is called, he had burns that somewhat down his chest and down his legs. But nothing on the backside of his body. Everything was spared, it said. And so yeah. talking to other like law enforcement, and um, I've talked to somebody out in California, they said that most likely Leroy was laying on the ground. That's what I, that was what I thought. Yes. So I don't, I don't think, for me. and this is again, just my opinion. I think that whatever happened, ha something happened in that house before the rest of them came out. And that's what stopped him from being able to surrender. I don't think he ever, I think he was breathing, but he was not conscious. Right. In a, here, I have the autopsy report. In the autopsy report, it says um, the pathological or pathologic diagnoses was smoke inhalation and thermal injuries of the body. And they came to that conclusion because he had superficial burns to the majority of his body, soot on his tongue and in his airway. Um, his levels of C, uh, carbon monoxide and uh, red lividity of his soft tissues and orchids of the body, which from what I understand is caused by, um, I'm assuming the smoke inhalation, it makes yeah. your organs red. I don't know, I don't know all this stuff, but then it says additional findings. If there was uh, blunt force trauma of the body. It doesn't say that's where. That's caught me and right plural adhesions, which I talked to somebody and who used to be an officer, and they said that it could have been from CPR being administered, but it would be strange for it to only be on the right side if that was the case. Yeah. And um, from what we were told after Leroy died, they told Leroy's grandma that they tried to resuscitate him for 15 minutes inside the house. And if you've watched any of the videos, there were flames coming, like shooting yeah. out of yes. the room that Leroy was apparently found in. So I don't believe that you could sit in there or anybody would want to sit in there for 15 minutes trying to resuscitate somebody when they could just pull him out and try outside. <laughs> away instead, from all of that right instead they brought his body out it doesn't look like they checked for a pulse or checked for any like shallow breathing or tried to resuscitate him they brought him out went back over to the ambulance or whatever vehicle was there grabbed a tarp and laid it over him and that was it <laughs> <clears throat> Man, I was reading a comment again for a second. <laughs> I was leading um, from Lisa, the other, the mom that I interviewed. She said the problem in Tennessee is from observation. Once in the system, they try to keep you there. Aaron went through that as well. Oh, oh Leroy said the same thing that they just they want to keep tabs on him. <laughs> 
Leroy would constantly keep his, uh, he, we uh, had drove down to Tennessee one time and neither one of us knew how to get back to Iowa. And um, I think my phone, I wanted to like use the music or something. I don't know why I didn't want to use my phone for GPS, but I just put uh, the directions into his phone. I just used his map. I st- yeah. He freaked out because I had to turn his location on. And we mm-hmm. argued about it for almost like seven hours <laughs> because I turned his location on. I know people and- that tape their cameras. Mm-hmm. Sound. He was terrified mm-hmm. of his of being tracked. Yeah. <laughs> and uh but and it's so, strange to me because um they told us that the so word on the street is that somebody called the Camden Police Department and gave a tip that Leroy was going to be at that house on that day at that time. And police are saying that they were on their way to one police officer said that they were on their way to Ren Avenue to a house on Ren Avenue, which is not very far from Mm -hmm. uh, where uh, the house was that Leroy died in, which was also one of the people's on and off boyfriends um, or one of the people inside of the houses on and off boyfriends. And that is where that person was while all of this stuff was going on at his house. So um, another officer stated that they were on their way to Leroy's ex-wife's house And both of them said that they all turned around once they got a ping to Leroy's phone at that house. And not just at that house, but to a specific bedroom. So they knew knew right where he was at, inside the whole time. And uh, um, Leroy, um, they kept, the officers, they kept telling us, like, call call like keep trying to call him keep trying to text him keep trying to like try to get him to come out yeah one of the friends of leroy's that was on the scene she was told like by russell wood is his name he's an officer but he's also a tbi agent from what i understand but he told her that they had blocked leroy's phone so that leroy was not able to receive calls or texts and, um, but that night they kept tell every time we talked to them on the phone, just keep trying to call him, just keep trying to text him. When I asked the sheriff about it, when the sheriff called, he was like, well, they probably blocked his phone because Leroy was trying to call a whole bunch of people and they probably blocked his phone so that Leroy wasn't able to communicate with anybody. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that makes no sense. You guys told us to keep trying to get him to come out. Like, why would you block his phone? I don't understand why they would have the friend who he went to see talk over what his ex-wife was on the scene. Right. And uh, other close friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why would you let somebody he. They threatened to arrest them if they like tried to yell out to him or run up to the house because like if any if anybody that was on scene that day would have ran up into that house, it would have been his ex wife. Like she, I mean, even though they had been divorced, like they still had a very very strong bond and were like best friends. So, so if anybody was going to go into that house and, and like from- get him to come out, that was on scene, it would have been her. From what I read in the report, he also didn't have on his socks or shoes, right? Right. Correct me if I'm ever wrong. <laughs> nope, he didn't. Leroy was, I- I'm assuming this is because well, he was an acquaintance in the house. Like somebody that he wasn't that close with. Does it sound like he'd just come in and kick off his shoes, socks, and relax? Leroy didn't even know? do that at home. and this was probably because he was in prison so much i don't know but leroy wore 
his socks and shoes all the time. It, like he was a freak about it. Like, and his shoes were always clean. Like he cleaned his shoes constantly. He was just weird. And I had a lot of shoes too. It wasn't like he made sure that he always had a pair of shoes to wear. And uh, if he was in the house, he would, if his shoes were still clean, he would wear those shoes or he would put on a different pair of shoes that were clean or he had little slippers, but he did not ever, even at his own house, did not ever take his shoes off of his feet ever unless he was in bed and he would take his socks off if he was going into the shower. But there were some times like, even though this was his own house, he was still like had that present mentality and sometimes would still oh, wear yeah. shower slippers. Yeah. Like, oh, he yeah. was just weird. <laughs> I know a lot of people that's been in and out and that they would say the same thing. Like their friends in the, the around them would say the same thing about them. It was almost right. like they I had never ever seen Leroy mm -hmm. walk around this house in just socks. See, ever. I'm weird. I'll walk, I'll run outside barefoot all day, but if yeah. I'm in the house, I have I'm completely on. different, and Leroy, like, hated it. But he was like, your feet are going to be dirty. I'm, I'm not running house, your feet tonight. <laughs> I will not be barefoot in the house. I don't know why. I'll be barefoot outside before I'm barefoot in my house. I don't know. I go barefoot, like, everywhere. My feet are so <laughs> black in the winter, summertime if I'm outside because I have no shoes on. <laughs> yeah, I think if I was ever found and I had clean feet, people would think that I was, I was, uh, there was something up because my feet would be dirty. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, you're talking about the socks and shoes. Yeah. Um, because his, his clothing, it says, this is word for word from his autopsy. Okay. The body is received wearing black shorts, black underwear, a white metal necklace, a white metal watch, and a yellow metal earring. There are remnants of fabric encircling the bilateral ankles, which I don't know what the bilateral, what part of the ankle that is. But if so, on my little notes, it says socks and shoes with a question mark or if it's a restraint. But then it could not have been socks and shoes because the only part of his feet that was had any burns was the front, like the tops he of his feet, not the bottom. And from what I've read, he wasn't burned enough for his socks or shoes to burn off or right. burn. Yeah. From what I understand. But then, the, see, and this is what doesn't make sense to me either. Later on in the report, it has patient name, and then it crosses off the name that they put in, and it puts Leroy Stoker. But before they crossed it off, it says charred remains. Yeah. So uh, charred remains and superficial burns is like a completely different. They contradict each other. Yeah. But I'm not under, like, I don't know if that's just what they use in a report of yeah. some, like a burn victim. I don't know. Um, I hope we start I with can't... people that come to the page that know a little bit about this stuff. So when we talk about right. it, they could give you a little bit of clarity. Right. So, um, and I also feel like if, if, if it was burned enough for Leroy, like if his feet would have been burned enough for his socks and his shoes to be burned off of him, he would have had more than just a superficial burn. Yes. He probably would have been more on the charred remain side. Yeah. And <laughs> I would think that there would be more than just, like more remnants of the shoes or socks than just a, like wait, a ring, you know? Right. There would just be yeah. more than that. Right. Or the, like his shoes would have, like the soles would have been like melted to his feet yeah. or something. Yeah. That's exactly what I thought when I, when I was reading it, I was like, it just, I, it almost sounds like there was something tied around his ankles to me. Just right. my opinion. And it is, it is very strange because they they um which from what i understand is somewhat normal even though for the family it sucks but leroy's body laid out in the pouring rain under that tarp for like four hours before they took his body to nashville which is where the medical examiner's office is and once the uh so they told us because we called up there and we kept asking like 
was it Leroy? Is it Leroy? Like, is he dead? Even though we had just watched it on Facebook Live, everybody's saying he's dead. Like, we watched them put that tarp over him, and we could hear his ex-wife screaming in the background. So we already knew that he was dead, but it took hours for them to even call his mom or his grandma to let anybody know. And when when they finally did call, they did say that it was Leroy and that his body was being transported to the medical examiner's office in Nashville. But then the next day, or the day after, I don't know, but um, the medical examiner wanted to identify his body. And I thought that it was strange that nobody had to come and identify him, which... I can understand that it would be traumatic. So I can understand why they wouldn't want us to identify yeah, him. He had tattoos. Right. And they asked us. They could, yeah. They asked us what all of his tattoos were. But if they already thought that it, like, every time you go to jail, you get, especially prison, they take photos of your oh, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, tattoos. Yeah. But they asked us for all of his tattoos and, me and his mom told them the all what all the tattoos that he had were. And maybe 15 minutes later, they called and they were like, yep, it's him. The tattoos match. So um, we wanted to view his body. Um, we had people messaging us. This is things that you need to look for if something yeah. malicious happened or something suspicious happened. Look for these certain things. Well, we told we went up to the funeral home on May 10th. It was me, uh, Leroy's grandma, his mom, two of his friends, and his ex wife. We were all there, and me and his ex wife, especially, kept saying, We want to see the body. Like, there's just certain things that we want to know. We want to see the body just to and to be able to say goodbye, I guess. Yeah. Like, the hardest thing is not being able to say goodbye to somebody and uh, as I'm assuming for his uh, ex-wife it was especially hard because she didn't just watch it over a Facebook live like I did she had to be there in person the entire time watching this not being able to help him and watch them bring his body out so for her especially it was important to be able to view him <clears throat> yeah, and um, the funeral home director said that he hadn't had a chance to view Leroy's body, but the other uh, directors at that funeral home, they sent him pictures, and the, he's, the exact wording that he used was that there was slight burns, which I guess slight burns means slight burns over the majority of your body, yeah. but he also said that uh, there was a full autopsy done, which a full autopsy includes opening up his head and I don't, checking out his brain, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um, so while we were at the funeral home, we decided maybe we don't want to view the body like whatever. Well, after we left, um, we looked up some pictures of what that looks like and like an autopsy to be able to know, like, sure. or kind of, I, I guess yeah. kind of desensitize to what yeah. that might look like. I'm sure it would be different actually being able to yeah. see it, but we called back up to the funeral home within an hour of us leaving and said, you know what? We changed our minds. We do want to view his body. And by then the funeral home director had said, that he had talked to his lawyer and the lawyer said that it is a liability for us to view the body because um, it could be too traumatic and, and we could go back and sue them if, if we have any like mental damage, I guess, from viewing the body. There was nothing that you guys could sign that way. Apparently not. He didn't even offer it. I but just, I yeah, so nobody viewed his body at all. And it, this is something that is on his um, autopsy report too, is it says 
that because from what we understand, Leroy has been cremated. Like Leroy always said, just throw me out back and put me in the fire and just, you don't need to do anything yeah. special. Just, I just want to yeah. be burned up. Cause that was also like a religious thing. He's like from, um, I want to, I don't know. He was the Bible Returning one. And to I the earth from heaven. <laughs> yeah. He Returning wanted to earth. go back to ashes from yes. ashes. He was made yeah. from ashes. He wants to become yeah. whatever. But um, in his autopsy, it says cremation approved. And it says no. So I'm not understanding if that is from at, like at the time of the, that this report was made that it like was just not approved yet for him yeah. to be cremated. But then why would it still say that when it becomes public record that so is that is not he... approved? So from what he... we understand, he's been cremated. But from like me just thinking, me and his mm -hmm. ex-wife have talked about it and we're like, is he just in a refrigerator somewhere? Like, that is creepy. <laughs> Honest shit. So they like, and if that's the case, then I want to see him. <laughs> they they still have his remains. Uh, the funeral home still has his remains. Yes, they have not been released. Is there any talk of them being released, or uh, his parents have to decide who's going to get him and sign papers for him to be released? It's not anything that the funeral home did. It's his parents. <laughs> that's, just, I, that's just crazy. I, I think I would want him home as soon as possible. Nope. I would like him. I don't even care where he's at. I just would rather him not be in a funeral home. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's my point. Like, like, funeral homes I are creepy. Imagine. They smell bad. Like... <laughs> Uh, his I'm, mom laughs about it everyone i mean she's upset that he's not out of there but she'll she'll say it's kind of funny that even after death he's still locked up because they have him locked in a safe yeah <laughs> like yeah so. so is is she unable to go get or is he not his mom is not in the or? best of health Okay. And she cannot drive, and she lives like two and a half hours away. Um, she has to sign some papers, but Leroy's dad also has to sign those papers, and they can't agree on who is going to get him. And his dad does not want to split them. Oh, okay. That's what I was going to ask if they're, yeah. they, I see. It's just a big controversy. Which is is sad when you just want him home. So I mean, me personally, I would just feel like maybe Which then he would be at peace. To court, but neither one of them will go to court. Apparently, couldn't they release them to somebody like yourself? Couldn't they sign for you to go get them? We're not uh, next of kin. So it is only the parents that can come and sign it. I'm sure that they could re release it to somebody else if they sign those papers, but they will but they not sign the papers. Do, they won't go up there and do it. No. Which is, as far as Leroy and horrendous. Really loved him, is really, really it's it's traumatic. irritating and frustrating, which I'm sure it is for them too. Yeah, but no yeah. being on the outside of it, it's like, I just, it blows my mind friend. that they would you rather feud about it, it than, than get it handled. Yeah. I, it just, absolutely, that, that part just breaks my heart. Just, just, I honestly I cannot imagine how you feel and with him just sitting there. I, and well, there was, um, not too long ago, there was a really bad flood in Waverly, Tennessee, which from what we understand is where his body or his ashes are being stored. Yeah. And there was a quite a few people that died. And after that flood happened, like 
I freaked out because I was like, his ashes are gone now. Like, if that funeral home flooded, he's gone. And mm -hmm. nobody is ever going to be able to get him. And I called every single funeral home that I could find in that town, and nobody had him. <laughs> That's terrible. But all of them said that, which I don't know if they just told me that because I'm not the next of kin. <laughs> Smart. My, yeah. my son found me. I but I don't, yeah, I don't know if they just told me that because I'm not the next of kin or, or if they really don't have him. But they all did say that they did not have flood damage. So, like, that was a sigh of relief that yeah. even though he's still locked away, at least he's still there. <laughs> Hopefully. That's, that's just... For a horrible situation, I just, I think that, that it's just sad. He should be home regardless. Really it is do. what it is. I can't do anything about and, that. And, you know, <laughs> and I can't imagine how I, 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 you, I mean, I would imagine if you guys were married, it would be a lot different. And well, I, we weren't so no, and that just <laughs> and I just think that's terrible. You were with him. Those girls know him as his dad. If I just I don't I just don't think that's right. I understand it, but do right. I agree with it? No, absolutely not. I understand it as well. And Leroy would like um Leroy had three siblings and his oldest sister passed away. And there was a lot of drama after she passed away too. And Leroy always said, you know what? We're not taking sides. Like, yeah. we're just going to stay out of it. And like a lot of his family had a divide after his sister died. And um I get, yeah. For us, he just said, just don't say anything about it. This is not between us. This is between them. If they want like we're just going to keep our mouth shut. So I feel like for me, he would be telling me the same thing. You know what? It's not your business. It's not your drama. Just stay out of it. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's still nice to hear about who he was and, and right. just. I'm talking about more. like the, the, the family drama that's going on with his ashes. Like, because both both sides have told me to talk to the other side. And I'm like, you know what? It is not between me, you, and you. It is between you and you, yeah. not me. I have nothing to do with this. I like, there's no le legal obligation for me. I would like to have ashes, but if I yeah. don't, like, that's just, that's just ashes. That's all yeah. it is. Yeah. I mean, his, his other sister, uh, a couple, like last week or the week before, we were over at her house and she has her sister's ashes, some of them anyway. And yeah. all it literally is, is it looks like, like after your fire is gone, like that's yeah. all it looks like. And there's just, this was kind of ugh, to me, but there was little pieces of bone in there. Yeah. Like you could oh, see yeah. the little pieces of the bone. Mm -hmm. That's literally all it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, when my husband's mother passed away, she was cremated and they split the ashes between the three of them. And mm -hmm. we, we just have her in a little shelf in a box and just a little. Right. Yeah, but that's, that's. And then we took some down to around Pigeon Forge in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, up in the mountains. Yep. And uh, I, yeah. I have never seen a mountain. But well, well, to all me, the time, Ohio, those are mountains. Okay, those yeah. are. Scary. Oh well, I've never be even been out there. I'm from Wisconsin, so yes, I, like I, if you go I, along the Mississippi River, you see a bluff, and it's like, oh my gosh, it's so big. <laughs> huge mountains. Oh well. Honestly, my opinion is I don't think that he there there. I believe that there's something bigger. 
I don't know I exactly what they're in here, and I believe was. that if the police did not have anything to do with it, that they're covering up what did happen. Yeah, that is my at the very least. Somebody should have gotten suspended right. or punished. You know, like uh, I asked the chief, or I said to the chief of police on the phone one day, I was like, you know, it's really frustrating to think that after all of those, all of this happened and the scene died down or whatever, and Leroy's body was taken away, everybody got to go home to their families and go to sleep or kiss their wife mm -hmm. or um, got to cuddle with their kids mm -hmm. and got to wake up the next day and eat breakfast and just go on with their life. And Mother's Day was that weekend and Leroy was going to come home and spend time with his mom and do stuff. Like it's so frustrating that Leroy was the, from what I, from my opinion, he was the only one who was not given that chance to see his family again and go on living his life. Even though he would have gone to jail if if they would have brought him out, he would have gone to jail. But at least he would have been able to come home someday. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, and the chief of police was like, you know what? You're right. I'm sure all of them left and they just went on home to their families and forgot about it. <laughs> and the show's over for them. Nope. Yep. That's how it felt. It felt yeah. like Leroy was a show pony and a trophy. Yeah. And uh, it, for, he, there was one uh, news article from or from the Camden Chronicle, which is the newspaper there. So there was one story there. And then the news station, uh, there was one article ran or one I news story. I can barely ran. find, honestly, the most information mm -hmm. I've heard about it was from you yourself in the autopsy report. Right. Uh, they, like I told you when I first they ran a story literally the day after, and after that, that was it. I, I, I tried reaching out to the Camden Chronicle and the Tennessee River Valley News, and um, <clears throat> I've tried reaching out to WBBJ and so, uh, like Nick Burris from Nashville, and nobody wants to pick it up. Like they made Leroy look like a monster. Yeah. And from from my perspective, they made Leroy look like a monster and like they were doing the community a huge service by getting this man off the streets. It doesn't sound like when in reality Leroy Leroy was the like the type of person who would just <clears throat> all he wanted was a family. Like he wanted to spend time with his kids. Like even his ex wife's son, who uh, that was his kid. Like they would ride around and sing and dance in the car. Like my kids, he just, how, how old was he was 30? Yes. Okay. I'm 32. I just turned 32 in October mm -hmm. and my kids know that <laughs> mama would get down and roll around and play, but she's got to take breaks. He just seemed like he, he had was the not the amount of energy. Yeah, he, he was up. not the one who needed a break. Yeah, like his break was once they went to sleep. Once he went to sleep, he would sit down, drink his little Bloody Mary, mm -hmm. and chill. And wanted to sit. He still wanted to sit up and like talk or spend time together, watch movies, yeah. like. That's what me and my husband do after them kids go to bed half the time. I have me a glass of wine or a Bud Light. I tell everybody from 7, 8 o'clock to 11 midnight, it is mom's time. Yep. And that was Leroy. He would, he would get up in the morning and sometimes I would be gone for work. So he would get the kids ready for school and he would take them down to the bus. And then he would spend the entire day cleaning and he would go on runs. He... We had a, a this is creepy, but we had a cemetery across the road from our house and he liked running through there and like he liked to stay physically active. So he would sit there and just work yeah. out and then clean some more and go for another run or run down to the grocery store or the gas station and 
then once the kids got home from school, it because our the youngest one, she was in preschool uh, when we lived in Iowa. This is what I'm talking about. But he would, if she was home from preschool, like he would play all day while he cleaned, like just yeah. And then yeah. she, uh, Paisley would get home from school and she, they would sit there and play, and he would do homework with them, and he would like make sure that they got in the shower and brush their teeth, and then. He would sit there and play with them some more and get them ready for bed and read to them. And he would How sit there and pray girls? with them. And then How after that. Handling? How are they dealing? Um, my oldest daughter is struggling a lot. <laughs> She's had a lot of. Um, <clears throat> like. Physical outbursts she's very yeah. angry she doesn't understand yeah. the youngest one she doesn't understand but she i mean she is so strong like i just can't believe how strong she is because she unless the only time that she really gets upset is when she watches like a movie like tarzan where the parents get killed she starts oh, yeah. crying for that and like any kind of movies that have like a, a dad in it, especially if they get killed or they die, yeah, that it that is the only time that like she gets upset. But any other time, like she'll talk about the the Great Danes that have died, and she'll just sit there and say, "Leroy's just in the clouds playing hide and seek," oh. and her. She'll talk about how he's riding horses and, or like the, it was really hard her first day of kindergarten because when Paisley, her first day of kindergarten, he was the one who I had to work that day. So he got to sit there and he got to get her on the bus and he was so excited and happy oh. about it. He got to get her off of the bus that day and was so proud. And for Scarlett, it wasn't like that, especially with COVID. Like, yeah, I wanted to be there. And uh, she was scared. And she asked me, like, if I would go in with her. And I was like, you know what? Your dad is going, even though I can't go in with you, which I couldn't because of COVID. I was like, even though I can't go in with you, your dad is going to be yeah. with you all day today. Like... And she was so happy about it. Like, she, I don't, I, like, and I sat there and was just bawling. And, like, you I, know, the yeah. other parents on their first day of school for a kindergartner, they're all, like, a, like just, uh, they're happy, sad, I guess. I don't know. For oh, me, yeah. well, I was ready for her to go to kindergarten. Like, that's my second kid. I just need some time by myself. <laughs> like, I could just kick her out of the door. <laughs> but yeah, I sat there and I just bawled. And I sat there for, like, 15 oh. minutes after I dropped her off. And I was just so sad because that was something that he should have been there for. <laughs> because especially her, like... Our oldest, their real dad was involved, like, for the first year and a half of her life. So she's had another, like, another father figure in her life, at least for the first year and a half, two years of her life. And then he kind of just, like, dropped off. But for Scarlett, that, she's never had that. Leroy was the only, only. like, father figure in her life. Like, that was her dad. And even though it wasn't biologically her dad, like that still was her dad. So yeah. it was just I hard. told everybody to this day, my stepdad came in when I was two or three. And my dad was never really in the picture, still isn't. Um, no matter what our family went through, that my stepdad was my dad. When I refer to my dad, people know very well that I speaking of my stepdad. Right. For how cold it is outside, I am like sweating. <laughs> That's okay. You know, we can we can take a break. And you are always free to come back on here. I mean, I just think it's just so important that he wasn't a monster. 
oh. that people associate with people barricading <laughs> themselves in that he wasn't he was a father and so much more and i don't think anything in his life points to him being a monster i know i've seen monster <laughs> right and i just i really he appreciate him, and like I think literally you. would not hurt him. he he was scared of spiders like <laughs> Uh, he, uh, you know, he was like supposed to be this big, scary man. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I just, and, I don't. See and that. yeah, and he was supposed to be this monster. But like, if, if there was a spider, he would like scream. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And he would be like, "You're gonna have." I to can't kill it. say I can't much there it. because I'm terrified of spiders. My, uh, me my too. son will chase me around with fake spiders, oh. and that's almost oh. enough. But, like, at his funeral, one of his friends, she was, tell like, she told me this story about how, I I'm not going to, like, sugarcoat it. Leroy was a drug dealer. Yeah. And um, he was over serving one of his friends. And that was all he was there for was to do that. And her daughter had her first seizure and the mom had no idea what to do. She like, and Leroy's mom has had seizures in the past. So he yeah. knew a little yeah. bit about it and like mm -hmm. knew how, like how they should be on the floor and like just how to keep yeah. them safe. He stopped what he was doing, even though he was just there to like serve yeah. them dope. Yeah. He, he began praying over her daughter and, and prayed throughout the entire length of her seizure and most people, are, at least from what I would assume, most drug dealers do not care about you. They're there for money. And that's it. Yeah. Leroy would sit there and from what he had said anyway, like even though he, he would serve these people dope, like he still cared about them. He cared about everybody. Like he always said that he held no grudge against anybody. He forgave everybody because that's what he was supposed to do. At, like, but um, there would be times where these people would be spending hundreds of dollars on dope and they would there, he would look in their fridge and there'd be no food for their kids. Yeah. And he would sit there and he would snap on them. And then he would come back a couple hours later with food with and and clothes and mm -hmm. uh, like make sure that their bills were paid and then he would tell them not to talk to them or not to talk to him and ask him for dope until they could get their their shit together yeah <laughs> like not a lot of people are out there like that they're like here you go give me my money sayonara right he cared about everybody's kids first. He would come over there and he wouldn't even want to like sit there and get high with everybody. He would want to sit there and take the kids outside and go shoot hoops or like he would take the kids shopping sometimes and yeah. just, just he would, uh, he was just a different type of person. Like I've n never met somebody like that. <laughs> He's weird. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. That's awesome. And I think like, I think people need to see that side of him. Right, it is strange. <laughs> like he was just a very strange person. <laughs> but you could just, like, you know, I I'm know. I'm on to where I I feel like I can relate. You know, he just he just strikes me as the person that I can relate to. That it doesn't matter what you're going through, you know, or who you are. We can relate to feelings in certain types of situations that we've been in ourselves. And I just think he's seen past everything. Right. Well, there was a time that like, I started getting curious about like the, <clears throat> I had, before I met Leroy, I had only ever smoked weed. And yeah. like after I'd say probably a year and a half of us being together, I was like, you know, I'm kind of curious about this stuff and like why you like it so much. And he was like, you can try it, like, as long as you're here with me. But if I ever find out that you're doing it with somebody else, I'm going to flip out. And, like, I tried it once, and then 
I wanted to try it again. And he was like, no, you're not like, this is not you. You are not this type of person. You're not doing this stuff. (laughs) Like you could try, you tried it. And if you want to do it, which I ended up doing it without him. And he snapped on the person who gave it to me. He snapped on me. And he just flipped. He was like, you are a mom. Like, you need to take care of your kids. And yeah, this is not you. You, th- like, I mean, he was a lot more mean than that. Leroy was the type that he did not care if he hurt your feelings as long yeah. as he was telling you the truth. And that's and, I can relate to that. Yeah, he was like, look at you. Do you I mean, like not- this type of person? Yeah. I like he would tell like because he knew i i mean i told him how much i spent on it and he was like you could have used that for so many other things like yeah what are you doing <laughs> yeah i mean it, it was a lot more harsh than that it but just, it got me to wake up and i'm like tough love right <laughs> yeah which he did not. He always said, "Do as I say, not as I do." As I do. I, t- <laughs> I swear. I tell my kids that. I swear, yeah. I have a potty mouth. Okay, and everybody's <laughs> like, "Oh, you shouldn't cuss around in front of your kids." Or I'm the type of mom, you don't say what I say. That's the. That's it. Zoop, that's yeah. it. <laughs> Mom's gonna. Mom is 32. She has done her time as a child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say what I want and you just better not repeat it. Right. <laughs> my, my, my son goes, well, why can't I? I said, well, when you move out and you have a house of your own and a family, by all means, you can use bad words. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. I do. That is me. Oh. Well, I don't want to keep you too long. Um, yeah. Well, I saw how long Lisa's was, and I was like, "There's no way I could talk for two hours." <laughs> I know you would not think, but there's just so there. That's why I think it's so important to do this because there's just a lot about a lot about these people that people don't know, and I think it's really important. And I keep telling everybody, you know, why the reason Gabby Petit, we've seen all of that. Every they let us in, and I think that. Everybody needs that opportunity to be able to do that. I think everybody should hear that Leroy was not a monster and be portrayed the way he. Uh, that been. was a and big thing. You know, after he died, I read the articles and I was like, you guys are literally running this crap. Oh, no. like- I looked him up before you showed a picture of me him to me and we got to really talking. I thought he was black. Because that's all uh, you looked up his name, and that's all I seen on there. And then when you showed me a picture of him, I was like, "Oh, he's definitely white." Uh, a lot of people that were on those lives, a lot of people that were on those lives, used the race card. If this would have been a black man, they would have just gone in. I thought he was like, until I seen a picture of him. Because there's just and then. After they killed him, I went back on those lives, and I'm like, if he was black. Y'all would be flipping out about this. Yeah. And it, it is irritating. <laughs> like I the- just feel like everybody, I don't care what your circumstances, I don't care what your color is. I don't care what your lifestyle is. I, everybody deserves to be treated as a person that is no longer with us or missing. Just the right. same as everybody else. I mean, there's a, it's, and, there are certain times where it is justifiable to kill somebody, but yes. just just a few days ago, in that same town, in that same county, um, there was a man who he was wanted for homicide. He killed his son, and um, the 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 sheriff's department was supposed to go, and they ended up not going the TBI went instead to go serve this warrant. And this man got into his truck and tried to run the officers over and then had the opportunity to go back into his house. And they still did not shoot him. And that they ended up 
arresting him and he's in jail now. <laughs> like for Leroy, he was not given it, for me. It does not seem like he was given that he no. was. I, my, that's just my opinion too, but no, I, I, yeah, I agree. Like even if he did have the opportunity to come out and which I don't know, like it's just strange. I don't think he but, had that opportunity. <laughs> right. Um, even if he did have that opportunity, they shot in so much tear gas that it probably, if he was not already unconscious, he was definitely by the time they got that. <laughs> I, I just, I don't, I don't, I understand like, that in the situations. Man, it's just, yeah, but I believe here, man, they're, sorry. <laughs> Signs just pointed to there was so much more that they could have done. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I seen in witnesses in the video, weren't there like police officers going up to the house? Yes. With, like no guns pointed, just right. Yep. They just had their little guns hanging, and th like right before that fire started, three officers went to the back of the house, and then you you can see them coming back up to the front of the house and then fire shooting out. When you look at um, one of the videos that I posted, um, it was a live that uh, and all one these of are the, in your group. So if right. anyone wants to know anything yep. that we're talking about, I pinned your group or I put your group in the comments so they can go see. But there was um, the guy who lived in that house, Leroy's friend that lived in that house, took a live and went all the way around the house. Yeah. And you can see that on top of the grill, there was a gas can, which there were some people that said that while they were sitting outside, they watched officers go to the back with a gas can. And when they came back, it was not with them anymore. It's just absolutely nuts. Which, you know, I'm not saying whatever, but I just feel at the very I, least, yeah, somebody should have got a slap something. on the wrist, a suspended something, an acknowledgement that this could have been handled right. completely different. Uh, in, in most situations, when somebody is killed, from what I understand, they're on an administrative leave until or pending the investigation. Nobody was put on a leave. What was there uh, really when an I investigation? The TBI did an investigation, apparently. Okay. Apparently. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Nobody will tell me the outcome of that investigation. Apparently, it from their investigation. Like the yeah. They, they won't really say too much. They won't. Uh, yeah. They won't really say too much about it. <laughs> They tell me to call the district attorney's office, but I've called Christina up to the DA's office. To... Huh? Sorry, Chris. I just seen Christina's message. She wanted to be on here. She's losing, having trouble with her connection too. She's been trying to hop on and join us, but um, she just uh, um, just said that she wished that she could be here. She wanted to be on here too, see. Right. So, but like the district attorney. Um, I've tried calling him over and over and for a while his secretary was hanging up on me. Like I would sit there and say, no, I want to speak to Matt Stowe. And she would be like, well, I'm sorry, but you can't, you're going to have to call later when he's not busy. And then she would hang up well, <laughs> and I would call back the next day or a couple hours I'd be like, later. Well, you tell me when he's thing. not busy. How about right. that? Tell me the times well, where he's not. The only time that I was able to speak to him was if I made a public post on Facebook and tagged him in it and he would comment on it. But then if I went back to try to private message him, he wouldn't respond. No. And I talked to him a couple weeks ago. Are you ago. nervous about everybody seeing this video? A little bit, but they'll be okay. <laughs> I'll be okay. I'm states we'll away. Back and you can come back on here anytime to update. And just keep everybody aware. But um, a couple weeks ago, I had talked to him. And he, like, I had not ever talked to him about a conspiracy theory or, like, yeah. it, anything like that. I would say 
I mean, I would say that it is strange that trained officers would do some of the things they did, but I wasn't saying that I blame them or anything. But right. when he called me, it just he was like differently. Yeah, when he called me a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was calling to see if there was going to be any charges pursued or anything, or like what was going on, because now like they were saying that they wouldn't release any police reports or the CAD report until, um, oh. I think she got disconnected again. Here we are. I'm sorry. Hold on just one second. <laughs> oh. Okay. Holy cow. I don't know what's going on. I just told my husband before we, uh, I got connected again that we were calling our service. You know, what's funny is that they have just, um, about a week ago brought us all new equipment. So I don't even, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Nope. I it's just like, what do I say now? <laughs> but um, does it keep? It, did it keep you on? Yeah. Oh my dear lord, I'm sorry. So <laughs> <laughs> then it's just like um, <laughs> hi. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm so new but, at this, guys. It's a working process, and I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> um, I was saying though that the, with the police reports and the CAD reports, which I don't even fully understand what a CAD report is, but if if they have something about Leroy, I want it. And yeah. uh, they were saying that they can't release any of that stuff until the investigation is over with. Okay, that's fine. So then. I waited for the investigation to be over with. I talked to TBI and he was like, oh, that's public record. You can go and get it. So I tried to get it. I tried to call anybody that I had to call. And, well, we got to wait for grand jury. We have to wait for the criminal investigation part to be over with. Okay, well, I'll wait for that. So um, I waited for that. They decided not to pursue charges. Was so that then I started. Just, how recent was that? That was. Last Monday. That's what I was going to say. Not this. Yeah. It was just this past yeah. Monday that day. Yeah. So they decided not to pursue charges. So the 
investigation part is completely over with from what I understand. And so I called over and over trying to get all these reports again. And um, I called up to the sheriff's department. Well, uh, I did, and I did not tell them like, I'm sure they probably know my number by now because I've called them so many times. I don't know. But uh, like for a couple days, the DA's office wasn't even answering phone calls and uh, which was strange, but whatever. Mm. I don't know. Um, maybe they were busy. Who knows? But um, so I called and the sheriff's department was like, you're going to have to get everything subpoenaed from your lawyer if you want police reports. And I was like, that is weird because at least in Wisconsin, all you have to do is go up there, fill out a piece of paper and you get a police report. And granted, every state is different. So I don't know how Tennessee yeah. works, but apparently in Tennessee to get a police report, even though the TBI told me that the sheriff's department reports are public record, they're telling me that I need it to be subpoenaed from a lawyer to be able to get them. So I called and called and called again. And um, finally, some somebody that is under the sheriff's department, her name yeah. is Dora, but um, so, which is also strange. They had somebody who grew, like was born and raised in Wisconsin that's the one who they have contact me is somebody who was born and raised in Wisconsin. And uh, so she calls and she was like, look, I can give you these reports, but I don't think you live in Tennessee. So you're going to have to, we'll only uh, give it to somebody who lives in Tennessee and they need to bring their ID with them to make sure that we know they live in Tennessee. And then they have to fill out these forms and we can give them these reports. And so I'm like, literally, if you had a friend that lived in Tennessee right now with the driver's right. license that said, yep, they but could walk in and go a lot that. of people don't want to do stuff like that because they want to stay out yeah. of the spotlight. <laughs> they don't I want a spotlight. I was in Tennessee. I, I know. I, I've thought about moving down there, but then I'm like, really? Uh, it, I get nervous anytime that I, especially if I am in Baton County, because after Leroy, after his funeral, um, when I was with other people, like after his funeral, we had like a little party down by the uh, stream and we went swimming and like it's different up in Wisconsin. We don't just go in random streams on the side of the road and go swimming, but in Tennessee you do. <laughs> but yeah. so that that was something that we did we had like a little party we had some food and some drinks and just went swimming by the swimming hole and um so there was a whole bunch of people around after i as soon as i left there within five minutes there was an officer following me and they followed me until i got out of benton county oh wow and i was terrified like I felt like I was being like driven out of their yeah, county. Yeah, they made sure that you was leaving. Yeah, it was so scary. <laughs> like they didn't mm -hmm. flip their lights on or nothing. But as soon as I noticed them behind me, I started recording because I was like, if they're going to pull me over, like, like, there's no way you could have e like, even though I had Wisconsin plates on my car, like there was no mistaken, like, that Leroy. Leroy, I was there because of Leroy. Like I had his name all over my car, and <laughs> like I had made posts on Facebook. So they so, knew who you were. Yeah, <laughs> they knew who I was. <laughs> I made sure of it, but then I was like, ah! <laughs> you, uh, yeah, they were they were making sure that you was going back home now. Yeah, and like any other time that I've gone down there, they. I haven't noticed any vehicles following me, but the day that Leroy died and a couple days beforehand, a lot of his friends said that they had had a pickup truck following them. And one of his friends has on her house cameras, that same truck no. passing her house and she had never seen it before. And that was somewhere that Leroy was known to frequent. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. 
there's just there's just so much more to this than a, just a, a, a basic standoff that we see. This isn't just any normal standoff that I've ever seen. Well, I've never really, I, I mean, I've never really paid much if attention. You just, to you know, if you, you look at them, they're all tense and especially if they think they're armed, they're all just right. Right. Tense on there. And I didn't see any, I did. Right. I like did. the, when the, um, the police came to our house, when Leroy had overdosed and stuff in Kentucky, you can't be arrested for overdosing or anything, but he had a gun on him and the officers there, like I told them that Leroy wasn't there. Like, even oh, though yeah. he was, I, I mean, you want to protect somebody, but um, <clears throat> like they acted completely different than what I saw in the videos. Yeah. Like they were I don't even know how many you, cars were there, but you assume the worst. If somebody, if there is an armed person, you don't know if that gun's loaded or not loaded. You don't know right. if they're really going to shoot it or they're just using that as a scare tactic. And from every thing I see, officers go into that acting accordingly. And I didn't see any of that here. Right. Especially for somebody being armed and they didn't have a clear view of him. It's not like could they look in there and say, oh. Well, they pinged his phone to a certain room and so. uh, they told us that they were going to put like a robot in there so that they could get eyes on him and know what was happening. I just, and, and then, these people saying that they're, they were just up by this house mm -hmm. with no guns point, just, just relaxed. Like that, I just never seen, who's to say he, if he was armed, he could have seen you before you would see him and you would have been, right. I just, it does nothing of it makes sense. It does not. And it does not seem like most people want to bring attention to the fact that it is strange. Yeah. I mean, there's right a lot of, I mean, I can understand that people may be scared or they just look right. at the situation of a standoff and be like, Oh, well he deserved it. Whatever. You know, he, he should right. have just came out, but what if he couldn't come out? Right. With all these little pieces that we, it's hard know. to believe that law enforcement would be like that. <laughs> It very much is. I was, I, I made a post on it. Like, don't get me wrong. There are, I know many, 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 many cops that put their lives into their cases to where they can't even separate it when they go home at night right. and their family suffers for it because these people become like family to them and they really do right. do their jobs for all yeah. the officers who don't. I feel smack those people in the faces and everybody that turns their cheek. Well, after Zebra died, like I was like, okay, who's doing this internal investigation? Like, so I called around. Ooh, I called around. I called the sheriff's department and asked to speak to Kenny. And of course he did not ever call me back, but um, I called the TBI and, um, or well, I don't think that I called the TBI first. I tried calling the FBI yeah. uh, office in Tennessee and asking them. And there was like, well, I don't, we don't do those internal investigations. So then I called the TBI and TBI was like, the sheriff is the one who does the internal investigations. And uh, um, it's pretty much to see how they could do things differently. And I'm like, so you're saying that the man who made all those calls last night is investigating himself. And he was like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? That makes no sense. No sense. Absolutely no sense. And like, you can go on the TBI uh, Facebook page and look through all the different stories of them talking about like crooked cops and all this other stuff. But you get to the day that Leroy died, and there is not anything about it. Like, not mm. even, not even making him look bad. It's just like he is nobody. Just no other. Because if I mean, if people catch on and they start looking, 
I think they're going to kind of come up with the same conclusions that uh, you and I have. Right. And I'm sure I've a lot of other people So have. many people, like, from and the I'm area really or in there other are states. Certain situations where this happens and by accident, you know, it, it, and stuff, I, I totally get that. But I... That amount of tear gas is no accident. I just don't, I don't feel me. that way in this situation. I just feel like right. whether it was on purpose or an accident, there was definitely things that were. At least should be explained. Yes. If, if, if nothing else should at least be explained. You have to explain and yourself. Why did you make the decisions that you made, made that right. day? What prompted no, you to do this? Right. And they will not answer those questions. They won't talk about it. And they then. say, well, this is an ongoing investigation. No, it is not. It's not anymore. <laughs> and I just think people, they just rely on the fact that people have short attention spans. They'll move on to the next big thing. And I just think that's why it's really important to try to get this stuff out here the way we do. I am in a lot of crime groups. I've followed a lot of cases. Um but the one thing I didn't, I don't see is people doing this. And I think that people should start doing this and actually letting these people speak. And I think that would be, that would make a bigger impact than just, you know, sharing stories and pictures and posts. I think, I think this should be the new, the new thing. Right. If media won't do it, I think, we all need to be our own little media. <laughs> yeah. I and, uh, and and they won't. And I'm not un like I'm not understanding why. Like for the longest time, it was all. Uh, and this isn't like a racist thing or anything. No. But there was all these black men being killed by police. Uh, George Floyd and somebody in Kenosha was like I don't. George Floyd was so big. That's why I know yeah. his name. But there was I another know. man in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and. But we uh, shouldn't have, it shouldn't be that way. This shouldn't, right. you shouldn't have to do things it like that. Like or, for so long that it was like the media was picking up on all yeah. these stories about these black men. Well, then Gabby Petito came along, and even though that didn't involve police, like the police couldn't kill her. Like she, they, blew she up. was a, a, she was like a social media person, like a YouTuber, and, um, yeah. and, uh, and, uh, I Not just think that they were so that open that it gave so many people different points to be able to relate to her. Right. And they were, they were on camera. They were crying. Everybody was seeing their pain. Everybody was seeing their emotions. Everybody was seeing, I mean, the look in Joe Petito's eyes when there's an interview where they show all their tattoos, like, it was pain and anger mixed and you can feel it. And I just think everybody started thinking like, this could be my sister. This could be my aunt. This could be my cousin. This could be my daughter. This could be. Right. And that's what I'm hoping to do here is just. And, yes. It is so frustrating. Like um, I sit here and I like pick apart anybody. What that County does. Yeah. Like I sit there and I just watch everything that they do, at least what is traceable on media. And um, there was a man last week that was murdered and he was found in his, in like a field or something and he was shot. And the officer, the, the sheriff was being interviewed and was like, I've talked to the mom on several different occasions. I've talked to the brother and the sister and all these people and he was giving details about what happened. And it was like, why are you so open about this? This is an ongoing investigation. These same questions that we've asked for the past six months are things that nobody will still answer. And the investigation is over with. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but he, they're being like so open speaks. and honest about that case that they had nothing to do with. And with this case that they have a lot to do with, they are so tight-lipped. Like, they sealed everything for a while. Yeah. 
I don't know if it's still sealed, but see. for a while, yeah. everything was sealed. You couldn't get anything. <laughs> I cannot. I, I just... I'm a person that thinks uh, one nation, one law. And I think that's half of the problem is everybody is trained so differently. So oh. down to the districts, not even just right. the states, the districts, the little towns. Mm -hmm. Nobody is on the same page. What somebody mm -hmm. could get in trouble for here will be a slap on the wrist here. And it's all these people right. that. I just think there's a lot, there's just one simple way we could take care of all of that. <laughs> there should just, we want to be one nation. We should be one law. I yep. feel like the only places we should be divided is our school districts and our postal service and where we go to vote. Other than that, and maybe this stuff wouldn't happen. And when it did, we'd be enough to notice that, that that's, that's outside of the, uh, Right. You know what I mean? I just think we're all confused. We we all what page are we on when it comes to anything? Are we all on the same page? And I just think that can that contributes a lot. What one county will do, a different county won't do. Right. And it's just I don't think it should be that way. That's right. just my personal opinion though. I just, and it sucks because no person, I don't think anybody should be, I don't think any family should turn on the TV and look at a different person and wonder why, why they matter more. Exactly. I don't, I just, I don't. And I, I it's frustrating. <laughs> and, you know, I don't want to like piggyback off a show. Or the Gabby Petito case, I really don't because I really, I followed it forever. And then it wasn't till he did. He looked at everybody behind the camera and said, you guys have a job to do. You have a wonderful tool, very powerful tool. So go give it to somebody else. And that is exactly, he is in a select group of people that know that pain and that, that terror of not only being missing, but found dead too. And He's right. All those people deserve to get what his family got. Right. And that's what it comes down to. So that's all I, that's all I hope to do here. And clear up any misconceptions. Like a lot of these cases don't even have a timeline. And sometimes that's a very important tool. It's just simply having a timeline of events. And I just, I, I think that's crazy. I couldn't imagine if my child or one of my loved ones went missing. I would be doing this right now. You better believe I'd be in on Facebook all over that place. Spilling my words. It's for, for me, not being from that area, it's hard to understand why a lot of people are not yes. doing that. Who, who I know care about him and I know want something to be done. It has to and be it's something. like, it, it's just hard to understand why they don't say anything, but it's always the same thing. I have to live here. Like, yes, we I, have to deal with I the, don't want the retaliation. Yeah. Like they know where I live. They, yeah. they've, for generations, they've, those families have lived in that area. So, grandparents went to school together and then great grandparents oh, yeah. even like they all know each other. They all know where each other live. And a lot of you. people still live in their family homes. I come from a little town like that myself. Yeah. Yes, I do. Well, I, mean <laughs> I appreciate you coming on here. And like I said, you're welcome back anytime. If, if people start to catch on and I would love to see, acknowledgement that's all it is for them this to get big enough for them just even if it's them bouncing back telling me you're a liar and blah, yes. blah, blah, blah. i would love to hear something anything from law enforcement i don't i don't care what they have to say <laughs> yeah there's something right 
I, I just, I can imagine not one going through what you were going through and two, I couldn't imagine having to go through that and then feeling the way you do on top of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would, I feel like it would just be nice if some, for some reason, they would start wanting to answer, well, what were those lines on his neck? And what was on his ankles? Like, just uh, so yeah, from an outside point, what would be the harm now? Right. In, in telling me this yeah. information. What would be the yeah. harm? Yep. And, and why shouldn't, why shouldn't they? The, like, <laughs> if they had nothing to do with it, and those other people had nothing to do with it. Yeah. And because uh, a lot of people have said that, well, Leroy must have killed himself. Well, if that's the case, why not make that known? <laughs> yeah. Like, I like mean, it would suck. Was, you know, if he planned in there to be a death by or suicide by cop situation, right. you know, I'm sure then, they would want to. I, I'm sure that right. would be put out if they really right. thought that was the case. Right. Instead, it's just nothing. Like, he was yeah. never there. He never existed. Like, that is what they're doing. And it's just, it just is so frustrating because he was literally anybody that you could add or that knew him, they, everybody will tell you the same thing. He was the best person that any of us have ever met. Like, people, as, uh, I aspire to be more like he was. And, uh, a lot of his friends say the same thing. They aspired to be more like him because he was literally the best person ever. I have never met somebody like him <laughs> ever. I just think he deserves to not be known as the guy who stood off with police. <laughs> yeah. You know? I mean, he thought that he was a Billy Badass, so I'm sure, like, in heaven, oh, yeah, he that's her, oh, they're yeah. like, yep, that, that was me. That. But <laughs> at the same husband. time, it's like, people need to know all the other good things about you, too, Leroy. <laughs> My husband will tell you, they gotta catch me first. I'll run. <laughs> and he did back in the day. So, yeah. before he met his angel of a wife, he was following <laughs> And he'll tell you, like, they'll have to catch me first. I am not going da 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 yep. And there was a few times where they did have to catch him first. <laughs> yep. But yeah. Every so year, I, can, I think been on here for life. almost three my, hours. Because that could be miscon that that could be so misconstrued on its own. Right. Well, we'll run from them cops all damn day. If you expect to, <laughs> if he thinks for a second he can, he will. He would. He did. <laughs> yep. Exactly, Leroy. It, literally, he only went to jail if he felt like it was time to sit down for a little bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. So I can I can relate to the type of uh, mindset. Or that if he didn't Leroy think he had. was going to be arrested, like that time that he had that gun charge, he didn't think he was going to be arrested. So That's why not comply my with that? Would think too. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I mean, you're going, you're going. You, I tell him we try to be Bonnie and Clyde, but Clyde over here. <laughs> <laughs> so I can, I can definitely relate very much to being the good girl and being <laughs> the bad boy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate hmm. very much. But well, figure... Uh, kids are about to get home from school. Here. Yeah, I'm going to go try to get dinner. Um, like I said, I will share this and I will point everybody to your group because that would be the best place to go. You know better than I do. I'm just here to get them to you. So I hope they <laughs> share, 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 and they come. You see Christina's comment? Is <laughs> he? I am. I tell him he laughs when I say that too. But it's so <laughs> I tell him, oh, well, if they look at your record and they look at my record, who's gonna? What are they gonna say here? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but I love him. <sighs> oh, I love that man. He gets on my nerves. 
Oh, <laughs> we have a very different mindset when it comes to the law and what you should do. <laughs> right. So I can, I can understand, but <laughs> he is a, he is a wild one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got the hiccups. <laughs> Christina and I talk all the time because she's she's she is a part of here, and mm -hmm. she is just a little uh, insecure because she's going through some things right now, uh, medical wise. And I keep telling her just because they see my face, she's the one that will share. She's the one that comp puts the comments in. She does all the little back things that I don't have to do, which makes it so easy. She's been dealing with seizures since, like, I think she said 18 months. So, or since she was 18 months old. So, she's going through a lot. And she doesn't think that's an excuse. So, it's definitely a legit excuse if you ask me. She will right. be part of it. She'll be here. And uh, you are. Oh, she's definitely that. commenting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She uh she does a lot of things that make this easier. So she is very much a part of this. And um, like I said, you I tell everybody that comes on and I will continue. If you ever want to hop back on, just let's set up a time and I'll make sure that my devil children won't interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> we they get that from their dad. <laughs> we get we can definitely um, continue anything that you, you know, after you get off and you're like, oh, I just really wanted to say this. We, you can come back on anytime and say whatever that you need to say. So right. I hope you well, get enough you. On the group so that you don't have to, but my door is always right. open. Okay. Right. All right. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so you have a good day. Yep. I'll, you get too. A hold, I'll get a hold of you here in a little bit. Okay. All right. Perfect. Bye. Bye. Ooh, yes, I am going to get off of here and um, go get dinner. I appreciate everybody for watching. Again, please share. Um, we could sit up here all day and talk, but what I want to accomplish, we really need your help for. Um, don't be afraid to go to any of these groups. They will always be pointed in the, or in the comment section. Any information they know you it would just be best to go there and talk to them and communicate with them and get all that information from them. Like I said, I have my thoughts. I have my opinions. I can have them all day. Anybody who knows me knows that. Um, so if you or anybody else would like to reach out, please do. This is just about how it will go. There's no surprises. We're not looking for the inside scoop. We are just trying to get the people that feel like they haven't been heard, a shot at being heard. So I appreciate you watching. And um, we have been talking to some more families. So like, follow, and share my page. Um, it will just make families, it, it will make it easier for families to find us. And we would love for them to. So I am going to go get dinner. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, um, drop them in the comments or like I said, go straight to her group. You guys have an amazing Monday night and I will see you soon.